Um, some things are going to be coming up since everybody is doing checking and looking into things. So are the residents. And I'm just really hoping the new people coming to council that you pay attention to the residents, that you respect the residents, that you establish a fair decorum, and that people are given the right to speak without the intimidation, as Ms. English alluded to, the harassment, and that we stop abusing our police power by having them at these meetings where there's no threat, but that you should have these police out on the streets because we've got a lot of things going on out in the streets. Oh, when you put up the one finger, I thought it was one minute. No, I wanted to get your attention. Oh, oh, I thought you were telling me I had one minute. Thank you so much, and uh, I'll be back. Right, next item on the agenda is the authorization of questions for replacement mobile data computers. Yes, um, through the chair, uh, we removed this item from the agenda on October 24th at my request for further research, uh, in that we wanted to detail the various elements of the cost uh, so that we wouldn't have uh, a mistaken understanding as to how much the uh, hardware, the computer itself, actually cost versus, versus the other uh, other pieces uh, that were involved and other, other uh, 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 mechanical devices and other work that was involved. So uh, I'd like to have Ray Tomzell just briefly go through the uh, detailed list of the computer and its various elements. in our current MBCs is unable to handle 
the new applications that we have in law enforcement. There's a 30 minute boot up time in our current MDC. So there's a delay with our officers when they start their shift or during times when they have to, when, when, they, when, when they're going, when they have, um, uh, when they have reports or when they have meetings or something like that where they have to be out of their cars. It takes a while to get started again. As Ms. Townsell alluded to, our proposed replacement is the Dell Latitude. Council gave authorization for, for the purchase in the 2011 and 2012 budget. It's the latest technology. These new computers have a five year accidental replacement warranty. No questions asked. Ms. Townsell talked about the bidding process through the Oakland County Cooperative <coughs> Purchasing Program. Eight companies bid it for this project. The computer that we chose, the evaluations for this computer, the, cum the cumulative evaluation far exceeded any of the other companies that bid on this, pro on, on this project. The technology department, the department in the, city in, the, in the city of Southfield, Public Works, and the purchasing department are all in concurrence with this with, uh, with that choice. The price for this project is almost $90,000 less than we paid four years ago for MDC. It's almost $98,000 less than what we were budgeted for this fiscal year. So I request authorization to purchase the 60 mobile data computers and I can take or Ray Townsell, either one of us can take any questions that you may have. Thank you. Mr. Seiber? Um, to either Ray or uh, Lieutenant, uh, thank you, Chief. Um, the existing computers, are they um, salvageable? Can we make money on them, sell them? Can they be recycled, in other words? I and don't believe they can be used within the organization, if that was your question. But we always like to have the opportunity to uh, auction uh, this, this equipment. And if it's not auctionable, then we would dispose of it properly. Because um, there are companies that buy them just for the metal alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. I, so I typically work with uh, the technology department to make sure that you know the hard drives mm -hmm. and any sensitive information sure. is, is wise, and if there <laughs> is any value after that, then yeah, we can sell it. Well, that would um, obviously reduce the cost. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now, I think the key element here is that the computer itself is about 60% of the total cost, and I think we just gave a little bit more detail now so that, so that the reader would understand all of the other elements that are involved come to the total a average cost of 3500 the computer itself <coughs> is 2067 Yes. So, uh, with that, I'd like to put it on the agenda for the 28th as a consent. Does that include installation of these computers as well? Yes. Yes, it does. And how many how many automobile police cars do we have on the street at one time? I'm sorry, we have a question. How sorry. many cars do we have on the street at one time? <coughs> I would say we we probably have anywhere Probably. from ten, 10 to 15 cars probably. It's somewhere around 10 to 15 cars on the road at any given time. How do you arrive at 60 needed? That covers Is that what we presently have? Do we presently have 60 of the old ones in our vehicles? <coughs> um, yes, sir. We have uh, 60 vehicles in our fleet okay. that uh, that can accommodate mobile data computers. Okay. Well, that, that wasn't the question. So that's not the answer. Okay. Ask it again. How many, How many, many cars do you have on yeah. the road? Is what I said. <coughs> How many are inside the car? Well, how many computers? Yeah. One. one. One computer yeah. in each car. Yeah. No, I know that. How many colleges are 60? Correct. 60 in there. Yeah. Oh, six dollars. Inventory. Yeah. Oh. Okay. That's all, Mr. Manager. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Councilman? Mayor? Um, excuse me. 
how long is the training and does the custom provide the training for the officers? <coughs> They, they provide us with, with ongoing training and support throughout the five years that we have of, of the contract. And that's part of the contract? And that's, and that's part of the contract. That's right. not additional? No, no, it's not. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? And this will go on the consent agenda for the next meeting? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank, you. Right, thank, thank you. 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 Item two is the Cousin Relate Nature Interpretive Center update. Mr. Sarkowski, would you give a report to the Finance Committee, please? We had uh, two meetings on. Uh, Do it, can you hand them out? Please? Sure. Well, I do. The Finance Committee, it was October 20th, is an introductory uh, discussion, and the uh, staff was asked to bring back more specifics for a subsequent discussion. Uh, following major points that came up in the, in the discussion, number one was the exhibit show consistent council support um, of this. Uh, I found the document, a uh, Carpenter Lake Nature Preserve and Nature <coughs> Interpretive uh, Center timeline. And, um, you know, there's, does everybody have a copy of the 43 yeah. items? Yeah. So it kind of follows the history of not only. We don't have, we don't have copies of that. Where did that come from? Did I dig that up? Oh, not the poetry. I thought you know. No, that. I'm sure. Uh, well, yeah. It goes back to day one. Yeah. You want to <coughs> yeah. yeah. You know, could we do that, please? Because that's very important, Nancy. It's, it's really I'm really sorry. I, I have a file time. on. I have a file on this stuff, and and, uh, I, and I guess I was reading it all together. And I didn't know if it was in this uh, packet or the one previously uh, handed out. Anyway, she'll make copies of it, and, and uh, <coughs> we'll distribute. Anyway, the exhibit show consistent council support for the project for a four and a half year period from March 27, 2006 through approval of the site plan on August 23, 2010. The question really is, is uh, when do we construct now or later? And the other point was, the key point is expressed for construction now where um, that on the negative side, we lose about $500,000 one time MDNR grant plus $290,000 in other grant and donation monies, which would be amounting to about 38% of the total project. And likely future construction cost increases and budgetary effect with PNR limited in the first five years of financing was available internally. I think what we're really saying is in that case, and was talked about at the table, was the, the grant money is going to be, if we don't act in the uh, manner in which we had made approvals uh, to go forward, uh, there were time slots in which the grant would, would be uh, <coughs> uh, not extended. And, and that's that $500,000 grant. Uh, the uh, agency which gave the $500,000 be none existed under the, as I understand it, under the existing administration. So that money would probably be not be available anytime in the future. Um, the economic pressures, of course, uh, the tax base decline and other priorities in parks and recreation were raised at the meeting. Uh, whether we have uh, <coughs> uh, Employees needed. We have 200 employees which are uh, through attrition not uh, performing today in the city. Uh, and there was some discussion about uh, <coughs> why should we go forward with this nature study uh, building. 
uh, when we you know have uh, open spots, not open spots, but needs in, in different areas of the city. Um, and this may be a public concern. We just went for a millage, and there was a concern that uh, that why are we spending this money uh, presently for uh, this building when uh, when our needs uh, seem to be needed in, in other areas, not uh, taking into consideration that parks and recreation and library funds are separate from the city's uh, funds. Um, we have spent $266,780 so far for engineering fees to date, and this uh, uh, this would not be lost <coughs> unless we don't do this project. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, it, it got it got pretty in depth talking to. Uh, uh, the acting director of Parks and Rec. It, it, uh, we really in depth went into it. Uh, Ms. Taylor and, and, and Seymour and I were uh, uh, taxing the questions and, and individuals whether or not if we went forward, whether or not they could afford to do so, uh, knowing that there was strain on all departments, it went back and forth. Um, and uh, we decided, uh, I decided not to take a vote uh, of the three individuals to sit on the finance committee, uh, but to send it to the full council because of, of, of the nature of the discussion and the pros and cons of it. Um, this is now before you this, this uh, evening. Uh, the uh, Council uh, Finance Committee, as I stated, did not make a, a recommendation, but uh, is seeking some of the discussion and thoughts of the Council as a whole. Um, this uh, 43 points tells you how long we've been working on this project, uh, and, uh, and there's minutes attached to the agenda that show all the steps of the way where the Council approved uh, this facility. and. Uh, I say I, I go through all these uh, <laughs> documents I have from way back, and then I found this uh, Great Lakes Reporter, which goes back to 2009, and um, I'll pass it around. But it, it's a big, big story is on Carpenter Lake, and 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 uh, I was uh, surprised, although it, it, it's in there, is that uh, <coughs> The future plans for Carpenter Lake Nature Preserve include the addition of a new nature center that will be constructed beginning in 2011. And uh, <coughs> so it's not a new thing. It's been on the table for quite a while. The, the center will add an important educational component to the preserve. The Carpenter Lake Nature uh, Center will be a LEED certi certified structure uh, using green, sustainable architectural design and construction techniques, hands-on displays to educate the public about local flora and fauna, fauna as well as substantial uh, architecture, sustainable architecture will be showcased. The center will provide nature-based programming for the community, schools, and other groups. So, um, so this has been on the on the board for some time, and. Uh, and like I said, after the second meeting of the Finance Committee, we thought it'd be best that we brought it for a full council for further consideration. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, that's the report I have. Yes. Um, Mr. Chair, Honorable Council, and Mayor, City Clerk, and uh, numerous guests and interested parties. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to to uh, state some of the facts here. Uh, we put together a package. The reason that I'm before you is that it's my job to provide uh, information for the honorable body to make uh, decisions based uh, on the, uh, all the factors involved and upon solid research. Uh, what you have in your packet is uh, really the background of the of the center, the proposed center uh, since its uh, inception in terms of it being a, a, a site plant. Uh, I think possibly uh, uh, that I would like to just go through this letter
here real quickly. Uh, and then I would like to, if the, the big decision, as Councilman Fricassi had indicated, is basically uh, timing. Uh, should we uh, begin the construction uh, immediately, or should we defer this project? Uh, one of the things I'd like to bring to your attention is in the packet there's an Exhibit C, so about five or six pages in, and what the Exhibit C says is this is from the Department of Natural Resources, and it says uh, that we would, it says, please complete both copies of this amendment, which is an amendment of to, to uh, obtain an extension of this grant. And it says we need a copy, we need this copy in our hands by November 23rd. Uh, that's the reason we indicate that time is of the essence. <coughs> and it says, due to the length of time since the award of this grant, uh, no further extensions will be granted. A final reimbursement request should be submitted by August 1st, 2012. What that means is that this project, if we were to, re if we were to uh, uh, remain eligible for these grant funds, would have to be completed uh, by August 1st. So it's a very tight, uh, it would be a very tight uh, construction uh, uh, process, and so we're bringing it to uh, council. Uh, if the decision is to move forward, then we would need to uh, act uh, uh, very aggressively, and it would require a, re a request for immediate need to act so that we could get this form into the uh, granting agency of the Department of Natural Resources, State of Michigan, by the 23rd. Uh, by way of background, uh, the Carpenter Lake Nature Preserve, which was open to the public uh, in October of 2008, reflects more than two decades of property acquisition and complex site development, as the Councilman for Cassie's list uh, indicates that uh, he handed out. Provides a context for the development of the Carpenter Lake Nature Center and Interpretive Center project. Uh, on March 27, 2006, Council unanimously approved, approved uh, uh, authorization, uh, which would be Exhibit A in the packet, to apply for the $500,000 Michigan Department of Natural Resources grant for the Carpenter Lake Nature Center project. The grant was unanimously approved for acceptance on October 22, 2007, which would be Exhibit B in your packet, with a city commitment of $500,000 in matching funds and a further commitment that the city of Southfield is required by the granting agency, quote, shall appropriate all funds necessary to complete the project during the project period. The resolution also placed the project under superintending control of the Southfield Building Authority. Subsequently, the city applied for and received two extension on, extensions on this grant while completing the nature preserve itself and researching the concept for the nature interpretive center. The third extension is now pending and Exhibit C, as we indicated, just reviewed, uh, contains the following additional caveats or requirements of both by the granting agency. Uh, talks about uh, the, the, uh, uh, no further extensions uh, and that MDNR's fiscal year ends as the state's fiscal year. Uh, September 30, the funds would lapse at that time and so the requirement is to complete the project by August 1st to ensure the 500000 grant reimbursement. Uh, the project's architect, Carly Ellis Devereaux of Southfield, Michigan, indicates that this can be accomplished if the bidding process can begin immediately, like tomorrow. Well, close to it, right? Uh, uh, or sooner. Uh, our acceptance of this final extension agreement must be submitted by November 23rd, as indicated. Uh, March two, uh, 22, 2010, at the conclusion of a detailed presentation by Parks and Recreation staff, the director, and the landscape architect, accompanied by Art Smith, uh, from the architectural firm Harley Ellis Devereaux. Council consensus was reached directing city staff to move forward with Carpenter Lake Nature Interpretive Center project, which would be Exhibit D in your packet. On July 19, 2010, Council approved the $215,000 adjustment to the 2010-11 Parks and Recreation budget, which when added to previous budgeted funds for this purposes, purpose allowed, allowed a total of $332,000 for a variety of architectural engineering services, including soil boring, testing analysis, topographic surveys, wetlands permitting, additional permitting and bid process activities, design engineering, exterior, interior, and site, 
construction documents and site plan review process preparation. Uh, uh, in participation, all these uh, uh, services are outlined in Exhibit E. The Council communication also set, set the project total budget at $2.1 million. Also on July 19th, Council authorized the submission of a $200,000 EPA grant application for the Nature Center project, which is Exhibit E in the packet. We have verbal confirmation from the EPA that, the that $140,000 was awarded uh, of the 200 requested, and we fully anticipate uh, formal communication of the award uh, by the end of this month. Uh, on August 23rd, 2010, the committee to hold discussion regarding the special use and site plan review request for the Carpenter Lake Nature Interpretive Center concluded with the consensus that the matter be brought before council for formal consideration of approval at the regular meeting scheduled for that same evening. The special use and site plan motion passed unanimously. That would be exhibit F in your packet. Uh, under the fiscal impact uh, portion of uh, this transmittal letter, I'd like to bring to your attention the uh, following detail. Uh, the budget, as we indicated for the project, is not to exceed $2.1 million, of which $1.122 million, or 53.4%, is already funded. This leaves a balance of 978000 yet to be provided, and the detail is outlined in uh, the transmittal letter. Uh, $2.1 million project costs less <coughs> the following items. Grants, donations, and previously funded items. $1,122,000 will be uh, uh, 500,000 MDNR grant, $140,000 EPA grant, $150,000 donation received from Denso, and 332000 in architect, engineering services, and related site costs previously budgeted in the Parks and Recreation Fiscal 09-10 budget and 10-11 budget, leaving 978000 yet to be provided should Council decide to move forward at this time on the project. Uh, the original financing assumption is outlined in the July 19, 2010 transmittal letter included in Exhibit E was to front load the entire project out of the Parks and Recreation Fund Balance. Although the Parks and Rec Fund Balance was at a very healthy level at June 30, 2010, 5.93 million, or 81% of the subsequent year's budget of 7.34 million. Parks and Recreation faces, faces substantial future capital project and operating challenges. Mm. That is one of the items that came up uh, in the Finance Committee uh, discussion. Uh, further, we need to keep in mind that Parks and Recreation received <coughs> only a <coughs> minimum mill increase of 0 .0976, uh, going from 1.6524 mills to 1.75 mills in 2011-12 from the millage election of May 3, 2011. This produces uh, 255,783 new dollars in 2011-12, or even less in any future years of declining tax base. Even with these new dollars, the net effect of the 13.02% decline in the 2011-12 uh, tax base produced an overall decline of $392,428 in total parks and recreation tax revenues from 2010-11 to 2011-12. This leads to the conclusion that the parks and recreation fund balance should not be used to front load the Nature Center project. The fund balance should be left intact to serve as a buffer to provide adequate resources to meet primary parks and rec capital needs while the department simultaneously works to reconfigure its operations to meet the revenue restrictions of the future. So again, should council decide to move forward on this at this time, uh, we would recommend uh, not using the Parks and Recreation Fund balance to front load the project. Accordingly, it's recommended that the Nature Center project be financed by advancing project costs from the local improvement revolving fund as they are incurred. The Local Improvement Revolving Fund is an internal service fund that exists solely as a quote, and this is a quote from the uh, Annual Audit Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, as a means for the, for the internal financing of public improvements, in other words, capital projects. 
Uh, this fund had a balance of, uh, of over $7 million at June 30, 2010. This, this amount is unlikely to change significantly uh, in the audit of the fiscal year uh, into 20, uh, in 2011, June 30, which is currently underway. Under this concept, grant reimbursements and donations received would uh, uh, go to LERF, serving to limit the overall remaining capital project cost to be absorbed by PNR to no more than $978,000. So $978,000 is the optimum or the maximum that this project could cost Parks and Recreation uh, to be financed over a number of years. The $978,000 responsibility of PNR would be amortized over 15 years with interest only payments at 3% per annum for the first five years beginning in fiscal year 2012-13. Thus there would be no immediate new cost to Parks and Recreation in the current fiscal year for the uh, Carpenter Lake Nature Interpreter Center project to move forward under the required expedited construction format. The amortization schedule is enclosed as Exhibit G uh, in your packet. To illustrate, uh, the total first year cost of Parks and Recreation 2012-13 would be, and I have uh, recommended, again, the council wants to go forward, I have a, a recommended resolution which would fine tune this a bit. Uh, even further reducing the cost to, to Parks and Recreation. Uh, the total first year cost to Parks and Recreation would be $29,340 <coughs> interest to the Local Improvement Revolving Fund and $75,000 for operations at the Nature Center. This estimated annual amount for operations is based on consultation with the project architect concerning utilities and other fixed costs combined with reasonable assumptions concerning staffing and facilities is cautious as it does not take into account any revenues that might resu result from memberships, day camps, classes, rentals, or special events. Uh, the goals impacted that we have as our ongoing goals, there are six of them, financially sound and sustainable, top quality, etc. as listed here. We have pulled out for special emphasis a live city to enjoy and have fun and a preferred place to make home. A recommendation uh, in reviewing the consi consistent history of previous actions in support of the Carpenter Lake Nature Interpreting Project, it is clear that City Council certainly wishes to achieve the objective as outlined in the unanimously passed site plan for the project. As we say, this amount is a matter of timing as to when. However, concerns about parks and recreation future financial challenges did arise in the preliminary discussions of this matter on October 20th in the Finance Committee, and the proposed financial plan outlined in this communication addresses those legitimate concerns by leaving the PNR fund balance untouched for fiscal year 2011-12 relative to this project and by charging interest only on the 978,000 residual capital cost. This proposed financial plan was reviewed in detail as indicated by the Council uh, Chairman of the Finance Committee. Uh, down for Cassie on November 10th. Uh, council approval of the proposed resolution uh, uh, should council want to move forward on this. Uh, what we're saying is if council wants to do this now, this is the best way to do it. This is the best way to finance it. Uh, it's uh, uh, cost effective to all of the funds that are involved. It does not require us to go outside the city uh, to finance this, this project. What I would like to do is I would like to pass this recommended resolution around which kind of fine tunes uh, some of the uh, items and gives a little bit more relief to the Parks and Recreation Fund. And again, this is uh, this is this only really takes would take effect if council decision is uh, to move forward with the project at this time. Um, so what this does is it would modify Exhibit G, which is the last piece of paper in your large packet, and that is the amortization schedule. Um, okay, so the resolution, uh, well, let's just see if we can try and stay away from so many numbers in mind as we boggle at this point. Okay, resolved. 
that this is what this is what we would have to agree to do if the decision is to move forward now. If the decision is to defer, then obviously this resolution would, would pass. Uh, resolve that City Council authorize the City staff to complete the process as required by the Michigan Department of Natural Resources, MDNR, to secure the extension of the approved $500,000 grant identified as TF06-064 Carpenter Lake Nature Interpretive Center under the terms set forth in the MDNR letter of October 24, 2011, copy of said letter being attached to this resolution. And be it further resolved that the Local Improvement Revolving Fund will advance fund the project meeting project payment requirements as they incur are incurred up to the not to exceed project cost of $2.1 million. And I might add, this will not go one penny over. No way. Right? Right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, be it further resolved that the remaining parks and recreation responsibility for the capital project cost of the Carpenter Lady Nature Interpretive Center project in the not to exceed amount of 980000 is to be reimbursed by Parks and Recreation to the Local Improvement Revolving Fund under the terms of the amortization schedule, which is attached to this resolution and provides for annual interest only payments at 3% per annum beginning in fiscal year 2012-13. And, and you will notice on the amortization schedule for the first five years, from 2012-13 to 2016-17, the cost to the Parks and Recreation will be $29,340 each year for the first five years. And as originally proposed, also they would have to cover the $75,000 in operating costs. What I have done in the next two uh, uh, items, uh, next two uh, uh, resolved elements that have a, a line next to them, is I, again, listening to the Finance Committee's uh, concerns about the Parks and Recreation, the fact that a lot of work needs to be done there on, on capital issues, uh, I, I went back to work to say how can, again, if the decision were to move forward, how would we design this to make it even, even less of a burden to Parks and Recreation? So what I did is I took a look at the existing debt that they have. The, the, they have uh, internal debt only, uh, no other outside bond issues. Uh, be it further resolved that the interest rate on the existing LERP loan for the Carpenter Lake Restoration Project, this is what I'm suggesting. The restoration project is the whole dredging, the dam, everything you've done so far. There was a loan for that. That was back in 2006. It was a local improvement revolving fund loan, and it was, uh, I think it's $980,000, and it has a 6% interest rate on it. In this rate, interest rate environment, I think it's appropriate to reduce that interest charge. But don't forget, it's one, one piece of the city loaning money to another. I think it's appropriate to reduce that to 3%. Uh, that's what the current loan recommendation would be. Uh, so I think that we need to restructure that to from 6% to 3%, <coughs> which will provide which would provide $287,401.13 in reduced interest charges to Parks and Recreation, an amount equivalent to 3.8 years of operating costs at the Carpenter Lake Interpretive Center. What that means is, for the first the round numbers four years, the cost of Parks and Recreation would be $29,000. Three hundred and forty dollars. That's it, because they will, they will, they will by getting this other loan <coughs> reduced in terms of its obligation, uh, that will take care of the seventy-five thousand dollar annual operating uh, cost. Uh, I might add uh, where the seventy-five thousand came from. Uh, it comes from four part-time people. Uh, and uh, a sign of re relocating uh, Ms. Carlock to spend considerable time over there as, as required. She's already on the payroll. Uh, and uh, also, we have an allotment which we consider high side of $20,000 for utilities. And that was uh, <coughs> worked out with uh, consultation with the architectural firm. And we wanted to make sure that. Um, we, were, we did not understate these costs. In fact, I 
think there's a considerable buffer in there. Uh, and uh, so I don't think we really come to 75, but uh, we don't we don't take chances on, 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 on estimates like that because you don't know where you feel you're going. Okay, the second the second new portion that I'm rec recommending, if again the council decides to move forward now, would be that the site plan for Carpenter Lake Nature Interpretive Center be extended uh, for a one-year period through August 23, 2012. Uh, our city planner Terry Grove reminded me that that um, uh, site plans do have uh, an ending term uh, if they are not exercised, and so we need to do this extension. And this is the appropriate way to do it. I've, uh, kind of, I, I've uh, had uh, a, a discussion with legal as to the language, this is the proper way to do it, the proper place to do it. And then be it finally resolved that city staff, the Harley Ellis Devereaux architectural firm, the Southfield, Michigan, and the Southfield Building Authority are hereby authorized to initiate the bid process immediately with periodic pro project progress reports to be provided to the city council. Uh, at this point, I think the, the most help I could be is uh, questions and answers. Uh, <coughs> on this, I'd be glad to answer whatever questions. And this really <coughs> is a council discussion about um, when, when, when we think we should move forward on this. Uh, there's, u there's, there's universal um, support for the project itself. That's not the issue. The issue is now or later. What it wants to. So with that, uh, if I can help with questions and answers. Uh, Glad to. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'd be glad to take a seat. Uh, Mr. Shred, would you uh, just cover the uh, different uh, allocation of funds under the charter that go to the city's library and the Parks and Rec? Yes. Yeah. To clarify that uh, they have millage under the charter, which goes directly to them. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Thank you for asking. Uh, Parks and Recreation has its own separate millage, and so you cannot use Parks and Recreation dollars, say, for um, uh, any, any administrative purpose uh, uh, or any other general operating purpose of the general fund. That money is for Parks and Recreation. That's how it was passed. Uh, if, you, if you ask uh, City Attorney Barris, he would tell you that, that that's how it's intended to be set up. And that they, and that their fund, that 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 fund is for parks and recreation purposes. Same with the library. Uh, many cities just have it all in one. You know, they may have just one uh, operating millage, and then each year they have to portion it among the various areas. But uh, we did, we we had separate millage elections, and just like the library was provided a certain amount of millage, that's uh, how it is with parks and recreation as well. Is that all, Mr. Council? Yes, thank you. Mr. Lamb? Sitting here listening to you. Sounds good. Very good. But not now. I think we should put a hold on this for a little while until the economics turn better and getting worse. And we're going to spend tons of money to build the nature preserve. Is this, this nature project, isn't this part of the Fox and Rec Department? Yes, yes it is. So, so the money is there. No, no not there. No, the, here's, spend here, money on that? Here was, here was the decision. Okay. Who's the decision? The recommendation. The decision is whether to go forth an hour later. Okay. The Parks and Recreation has a fund balance that's identified in here. As of last audit, nearly six million dollars. Okay. However, they have lots of other capital projects that they need to do. This came out of the finance committee with some concerns that were expressed there. Furthermore, uh, they, the Parks and Recreation, received very little from the new village. Just a little had the override. Okay, just a fraction of a, of a percent, two hundred and some thousand dollars. So we we have to take some time 
to really get into their situation and make some make some recommendations about it going forward, about capital, about some of the programs, golf course issues, and numerous other 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 issues. So, so uh, it would be if we go forward with this, this is the financing plan. It would be my recommendation that we leave the fund balance alone for now, and that we do an internal loan from the local improvement revolving fund, which is money that's set aside for capital projects, such as example. If out there we had a sinkhole tomorrow, okay, we had a collapse on Evergreen Road, we would go to that money. We would say to the road fund, we're going to loan you so many dollars to go handle this. So that's what the money's for. It's for capital projects. And if, again, council decides to move forward now, uh, I, I think this, the, the best and most cautious thing to do is to leave the fund balance alone in parks and recreation. That's outlined in, in the letter. My intuition tells me not now. The Park Direct has this six million dollars you're talking about. That's as of last audit, so we don't have this year's results in yet. They have used some fund balance this year, we know. But again, what we don't have people, audit figures. What should the people outside say? Going ahead with a project like this, and we're down nine firemen, we're down eleven police, or vice versa. How can you uh, how can you recommend? I'm not recommending going forward. That's a council decision. Well, okay. okay. This is a financing plan. Council. If the decision of council is to move forward, right. I think this is the best way to do so it. How can how? I'll change my wording. How can council go ahead when there's such need out there to the people and this nature preserves in the forest? What does that do to the people? Protect them? I mean, it's nice. That's why we're here. It's it's beautiful. Beautiful. I know. Put forth all these uh, concerns. But this guy in uniform protects the people. Absolutely. Fire the police protects the people. Yeah, absolutely. But you and can't use this money to fire police to hire police. Or firefighters. Well, then don't use it for anything else until we're able to to uh, correct the issue here. That's fine, except that all I'm saying is, if council wishes, as they have stated for four and a half years consistently, they wanted to do this. I know things change. Okay, prerogative of council. What I am saying is, if council wishes to go forth with this site plan, this is the best way to do it. Okay. Okay. I understand That's that. It. If council the doesn't wish to go forth with the site plan, well, the priorities but we need to know. The priorities then are different than today. So, the and priorities the one year ago are different than now. That's fair to say. Yeah, you're fucking me. I know. <laughs> I personally don't think we should do this and spend this money now just to put it on hold. Do it maybe in the near future, sooner than later, when things get a little bit better. But how could it look? We just had a millage, and we're going to spend, I don't know, X amount of dollars. $978,000. So that's about $2 million. That's right. We, from our own funds, right? From our own funds. Does that can pay for how many firemen and how many police? Can't use this money for firemen or police. Well, all you can do is change the rule. And change, <laughs> change the charter. Change the charter, do whatever you want. But, but yeah. your okay. your concerns are about how something looks, and that's a, and that is a <laughs> legitimate concern to put on the table. All right. Absolutely. That's what, that's what my concern is. <coughs> you can always change a rule or a law to protect the people out there at risk. Uh, a shack in the forest is not going to protect the people. It's going to protect maybe protect the animals from the rain or something, maybe. But I, I'm not going to go for it, personally. Okay, can, can, can I just ask to the chair if there's if there's questions and answers about the technical? Uh, I'd be glad to to stay up here and handle it. Otherwise, I'd like to have a seat then. I could. Um, I think I think the thing that needs to be maybe overlooked is that money is available that will be lost. 
in addition to what Mr. Kitaki was. Just give us a minute, Jim. John, go ahead. Let me, let me, uh, uh, I guess, I hear you, Mr. Lance, and, and that was some of the discussion that we had uh, at the finance committee. So that's common sense. And, but, but, yeah, but let me finish by saying, uh, when you weigh, when you weigh the, the entire uh, manner in which council approved this project as it went forward, that's passed. Just, well, when you, when you, when you try to build something over a period of time, council has to make approvals to go forward. Council made all those approvals to go forward. And, and now we are, we extended the grant money to 500000 We extended that to the final now extension. So, so what you're, you're really saying is that uh, excepting for the uh, architectural fee of 332000 uh, 275000 has already been spent. Right. The project cost is two million one hundred thousand dollars, but the loss that we're looking at, the loss is one million one hundred twenty-two thousand dollars that we'll lose by not going forward. That's that's the amount of money that we get from grants, donations, previously funded items, uh, the EPA grant one hundred forty thousand. Uh, dental gave us 150,000. Uh, there's all these all these funds amount to 1,122,000 dollars. So <clears throat> if you do not go forward, and and, I'm, and I must say this again, this money can only be spent in parks and recreation. There's there's no reason to mention that it can't be. It could be possibly used somewhere else in the organization, but it cannot be <coughs> diverted from the Parks and Recreation to any other department. It's like police and fire, public safety. So, so what I'm saying is you're, you're absolutely right that, that there is vacancies. There's 200 vacancies in, in, uh, in, in the system itself presently. Uh, what was brought up in the meeting was that, you know, we don't have a police chief, we don't have a fire chief, we don't have a building department deputy, uh, uh, director, we don't have uh, a parks and recreation director, we have a lot of acting personnel to run this operation. But the feeling strongly was, and I, and I give both sides of it, for, for this thing was it cost a million dollars to do one mile of asphalt road, one million dollars. If you had to make the determination to to do one mile of asphalt road, or complete something that we had been building on, and save a million one hundred twenty-two thousand dollars and spend nine seventy-eight other parks and recreation funds, that the value to the community. The value to the community would be excessive. It would be great because whether you're a nature lover or not, you know there's things that a city has to do to stay competitive today, and you just can't, like for example, close libraries, close parks and rec. You know, you start closing down shop because of the finances. What you have to do is to con continue to build but to do it in a manner in which you're staying fiscal sound. And that we're doing. There's no, at this time, no jeopardizing the future of the finance of the city by doing what this request is. And so uh, I look at it that way. Am I willing to lose a million two, which more than likely will be lost forever, or am I going to spend Nine hundred thousand dollars and go forward and have a facility that will be in addition to what the community needs expect. We have been number one in so many categories in the history of this city that and that I I see us still going forward 
in, in building the city that everybody expects us to have. And I think that this just contributes to, to the things that, you know, you have a letter in there from the schools, for example, that they feel that it would be great for the children to go to the buses would go to this to get a little more in-depth study of the nature, environment, the, whole, the, the type of building is, the green building. And, and I'm just saying is that, you know, I for one, I for one have looked at this deep, and, and I guess I looked at myself and I said, if I can justify it, no one heart, I'll be for it. If I cannot justify it, I won't be for it. And I can honestly say I can justify spending this kind of money at this time as opposed to losing all that grant money and going forward. They have answered all the questions as to the manning of this, excuse me, manning this facility and, and it's minimal, it's $75,000 a year, which is nominal. I ask them that they do a fee structure that people pay to go visit it and, and that is on the table. In other words, that 75000 can be offset by fee structure. Um, we go to Madison Heights and look at their facility there. It, it's heavily used by schools. They bring buses into that facility they have there. It's a 13 mile road across from the Wayful. It's an un unbelievable thing for the community. Uh, so I, I guess, we, you know, we are down we are down as far as activities in this city. We used to have a pool at, at Beachwood. We don't have any more. We used to have tennis courts over there. We don't have any more. We're kind of depleting the city from those things that our residents use. And this is something that our residents can use and be very proud of. So that's my take on it. Um, Mr. I believe your analysis is flawed. If we don't take care of our people, if there's a fire in a house, I'm going to tell the people, go run to the firehouse, tell them there's a fire, come on and put it out to me. Hmm. We, I, I, I understand your, your position, but I think it's, it's, it's irrelevant now history that we're going through right today. The people, I agree, it's a tremendous thing. It's good. I agree with it. Not now. We cannot afford to spend, even though you tell me it's Fox and Rec money, we cannot afford to spend that Fox and Rec money. I think it can change. We can change. We use money, the different money from different departments to do a road or do a this and do a that. Why can't it be done with a lot of money? Well, they holy, we can't do that. Doing it with what are the people, what are the people doing it with out there money. are going to say? We are loaning them money just like you would go to the bank and borrow money, well, to, loan them money to buy a car or buy a house. They're loaning the fire department money to hire firemen. Loan the police you can only use that money to hire police officers. You're missing the point. I'm not missing the point. You, you don't want to use the money where it's most needed by the people telling me it's in the Fox Direct budget and it's holy, you can't use it. No, you can't under the charter. Here's the charter. Read it. I don't have to well, read it. Well, that's what it says. I know what it says. <laughs> Doesn't make it right. But they can use the money to fix a sinkhole, a road. What has that got to do with the Fox Direct? If they can lend money to one entity, they can lend money to another entity. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to vote for it. I want to put it on hold. I'm not killing it all again. I'm not saying it's so good. Delay it. Delay a little while. We can't afford. They can't afford to spend any money. I heard this. I heard they want to sell the uh, sell the golf course. Is it true? Uh, that would not be true, sir. Well, uh, okay. Through the chair. They, there is a, um, a study that needs to happen about whether the golf course should be right. Uh, All right. Just, but not, not so. All right. But the nature preserve in the forest cannot benefit the people today. 
at this moment, when you start even now, six months or a year from now, because the economy is getting worse, worse, let them hold on to that money as a box of wreck for their own use. Then. It's still going to cost us a million bucks. Where do we get it? From $980,000. Where are we getting that? Parks and Recreation. Well, there it is. It's from the Parks and Rec. Yeah, they're responsible for paying for it. So why aren't they responsible to lend us uh, all the money? So the excess because we're building the Parks and Recreation. Same as they have golf fields, the same way as they have. Oh, just past the village. How are they going to feel when they hear we're going to spend all, these, all this money? I don't know. I talked to some of them. They told them they thought it was great. I so talked to people too. They tell me well, it's great. And they go into the polling vote and they vote uh, they vote wrong. Right, why? Come on. I mean, uh, well, they voted for <coughs> public safety. That money is it's going there. It, 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 it is going to public safety. Police and fire. What? All of it, except for that. What, the project, like this project? No, I'm saying with the millage was for police and fire. It wasn't for the nature study. Well, the parks and rec got the millage money too. The parks yeah, and has a millage. Two hundred and some thousand dollars only out of that. I don't care. Every dollar counts. Well, yeah, it does. You're absolutely right. Um, well, I'm not going. But there. the parks and recreation board really is the one that makes the <coughs> decision. Okay. okay but what the council decided <coughs> a long time ago is not is not relevant today. They have to rethink it. So. Um, they have to rethink the whole thing. Um, I'd like to say, first of all, that uh, my support of this project has never waived. Um, I think what we've done so far in, um, at Carver Lake is phenomenal. And it's been duly recognized by uh, numerous uh, outside folks. Um, but we are in a dilemma. And Don, I appreciate how this is laid out because this, this, this really is the crux. Of, of the whole thing. Um, there's a pro and a con to this. Um, I, um, I have some, some questions that, uh, um, however, that I need to get clear on. Uh, Jim, uh, to you, uh, the LERP uh, uh, capital projects, can it also be used, uh, let's say, if we needed um, New fire trucks. No, that's not the it couldn't, it couldn't be used for equipment. No, we have an equipment we've also funded that. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, we do we do have that funded. For example, <coughs> I received a call today from fire that we're going to be asking for some uh, replacement vehicle, mm -hmm. and uh, that fund is for Okay. So we have uh, basically it's for bricks and mortar. That's for uh, and, and, and roads, uh, sewers, infrastructure. Uh, generally, uh, infrastructure, not not usually uh, water and sewer because they... Well, we we use it for roads. <laughs> yes, roads is where you might is your pri is your primary uh, primary focus. Um, for that. What ha what should ha what would happen if the um, um, <coughs> we went ahead with this and then we're putting a, a, a new burden on parks and rec? Right. To, to pay for it, to pay for it. As you told us, um, and, and I, uh, I want to back up a minute and say, I appreciate the work that you put into this, uh, because what you've done is you've given us um, a, a charted a course of how we could safely, or relatively safely, proceed with this project, um, but it's not risk-free. Not true. It's not totally risk-free. Mm -hmm. Right. Because it's not risk-free. It has a hundred and if you go beyond the first four years, first four years it's, it's about as close to risk-free as you could be with $29,340 in a $7 million budget. Mm -hmm. It's not much. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the operating costs would be covered by, by my suggested uh, uh, reducing the interest rate. <coughs> Where it's where it starts to become uh, more of a of a pressure point for Parks and Rec is after the for, that, for this sixth year and thereafter it's 114 
thousand six fifty one per year plus the operating which would be a hundred and which would be another seventy five to say about one hundred ninety thousand dollars a year. Um, that's uh, not insignificant. Uh, however, the thought is that if we would go forward, the least we need to do is to have give advanced time because there are things that need to be done in parks and recreation for capital planning in general. Uh, lots of things need to be done up there, and they came out. Locker rooms, uh, well, swimming pools, that's where I'm uh, going. et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that's why we're suggesting leave that fund balance alone until we get in. We're going to dig in deep in the parks and recreation. <coughs> A lot of work's been done already, uh, but we need to we need to take the work that we have and and go even deeper okay. and have, and have, a, and have a, a plan for the capital projects. Over there. So that's where I'm, that's exactly where I'm going. So, what uh, what happens to Parks and Rec? Um, I, I'd, uh, I'd like to be an optimist about the real estate market in, in South East or Southeastern Michigan, um, but it looks like it's going to be a very long haul, um, especially given Proposal A uh, that, let's say, miraculously property values start to rise with the cap in proposal A of 5%, um, it's going to take years. So um, this is very worrisome to me. Uh, so what would happen, at, let's say after five years, Parks and Rec um, can't operate. I mean, can't assume this, uh, this cost. Then what happens? Does well. it, can it default on the uh, alert loan? Uh, uh, does it cut, uh, shut down business? Well, let's put it, uh, it's a good question. And it's one of the benefits of an internal loan. You know, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be defaulting on like a bond issue, right. which is a nightmare. You right. never want to be in that situation. Um, uh, that's a fair question. Uh, and I would, I would say that, you know, if, again, um, we would have to pre-plan for this because it's an additional burden. Uh, we're looking at, at as, as we know in the financial plan, we're looking at two more, at least two more years. Of, <coughs> I'm using a very pessimistic. People have heard this in you know, right. labor negotiations, etc. I'm using 11% drop next year <coughs> overall, mm -hmm. which I hope is wrong. But I'm already told by the county that the 8% at least is going to happen. Okay, I'm sticking with my 11 until you know, I get further information. And then eight and a half the year thereafter. At that point, you take the level off and start to increase. Uh, in general, you do have the problem of proposal A, which uh, in general holds you to the lesser five percent of the rate of inflation. There's some wiggle room in there if things come back <coughs> in construction uh, and uh, in commercial. Uh, but in general, that's kind of the general rule. So, so it is hard. To, to stage a comeback, so to speak. Uh, it takes time, no question about it. I totally agree with that. Okay. Uh, again, <coughs> this is why this thing has to be you know, viewed in a large context, <coughs> and why I thought the original plan that we had was too aggressive as regards, if we're gonna do it, too aggressive as regards the parks and recreation situation. So that's why I'm saying use these capital funds. Alright, so and, and, and it's going to take <coughs> at least four years to uh, reduce the amount so that there's time to adjust to the um, situation. The other, th the other thing that, that troubles me um, about this is uh, I, uh, and no disrespect to anybody, but I personally have a hard time believing that the operating costs with security, utilities, staffing, is going to be held to seventy-five thousand. I, I just uh, that's got fifteen thousand of wiggle room in it. So I, that, that I'm skeptical. I, I just tell you, I'm skeptical. That uh, that's I would <coughs> agree on with you on this. <coughs> Most of it's because Mary Carlin could be over there. Okay, so you could make the case that oh no, it's really all of Mary Carlock's pay plus. 
Okay, but we're, she's already on the payroll, so I want you to know how we came up with it. <coughs> 20000 in utilities, which is way high. I mean, we boosted that up big time. Okay, but utilities can go up, so I don't know. Got to be pessimistic on it. Four part time people, 19 hours a week, $10 an hour. Okay. That's about 30 some thousand. So it, 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 it totals around 60000 I say leave it at 75 because I think you're saying. Well, I think you've got to have a bigger cost of security too because um, that, that, um, that's huge. But I don't know what. Here's the building out uh, out of view. We have an architect here. I don't know. You, can you help us with that number? Security? Because I've got 15,000 to work with. And that's a hard number to pin down. Um, so the only way you could do that is to get a hold of a. Uh, Security company. Well, in, in the plans, are there are cameras uh, in the plans? I'll answer that. It was mentioned in the finance committee that we could put cameras up. But they're not in the cost right now. But they were, that's minimal cost. Yeah. We use satellite cameras now. <coughs> All right. The other thing that uh, is of great concern to me is that we're being um, sort of pushed because of deadlines to make a decision. And I feel this decision has to be made in the broader context of every every facility need in Park and Rec. Um, and I don't know them all. Uh, but I know that uh, we have a very tired Beachwood Center that um, it, it needs work. We have facilities across the way that, that need work. Um, yeah. And uh, it makes me nervous to uh, build yet more facility when we're having trouble taking care of what we've got. Um, I, uh, and finally, I guess the other thing I would say is I think this decision is so important um, because it is going to it's going to have um, potential ramifications <coughs> for a number of years that to be asked to make this decision tonight I am not comfortable with. Uh, further, I think there's going to be a new council uh, or a reconfigured council shortly. Um, I think the new members uh, it should be a full council decision all seven of the people who are going to be responsible for um, this course of action. Uh, I am not comfortable making this decision tonight because of that and because of where is the plan for the rest of Parks and Rec? The facility of And that, that uh, really bothers me. Um, I think the uh, thing that was missing here is the discussion that we had. I think everything that you're saying has been discussed. Uh, Parks and Recreation was here at that meeting, and we discussed these things. And, uh, and you're absolutely right. But I don't think personally that that it is because of lack of funds. I think it is because it hasn't had the attention that it is. Because there's money there. And and when there's money there and things are not taken care of, then you have the results that you have. Uh, I talked to the city administrator and he was even suggesting that they put the whole package together you could bond for it and get it all done because you have enough money there to do that. The Park and Recreation Fund that the six million dollars did. So if you had six million dollars, I mean, there's no reason for the shower to be what it is. There's no reason for the locker room to be like it is. I mean, because your house, you have it fixed. You got the money. If you don't have the money, that's when you don't do it. I mean, the meeting rooms upstairs, I mean, uh, the elevators, I mean, all these things were discussed at this meeting, and and you still look at whether or not, you know, we we could still finance this and go forward with this project. Uh, 
And it is a tough call. I mean, I'm not making it light, but, you know, I, I see that, that um, with all the money we have on the table presently and all the actions taken by council that lead us up to this point. That's the I mean, it's not really led up to today because of the date, because we have met that deadline and passed it down, kicked it down the road a little bit until they are not going to give us any more extensions. And the word is that if the 500000 is gone, that agency is not going to exist probably in the new administration. So that money is gone. So with everything that is presently on the table, you're talking about losing a million, too. And I'm saying is that when you go through the organization, you know, what we budget for, what we spend, you know, the, the amount of money that we're really talking about, like I said, you know, if you can sacrifice one mile of roadway, I mean, don't forget, we had a change order on Franklin Road for $800,000. I mean, so, so I'm putting the money in perspective, when you look at, you know, what do we do? We coughed it right up, $800,000. You know, you could have had something that was really, instead of repairing something that should have been done, completed, and and, and be proud of, we sunk another from a million dollar project, the additional $800,000, and, 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 and we got nothing, we got track and road. What I'm trying to say is here you have something substantial that the community can use, <coughs> that the community should be able to, so we have really taken a lot away from the community as far as parks and rec. You remember when we used to be gold medal award winners, we used to have Ball fields over here. We had little league tournaments here. We had we had a pool at Beachwoods. We had ice skating arena over there. Ice skating arena here. You had, I mean, tennis courts. I mean, look, we've really pared down and taken away what people were really using. And and now the only thing they can use is when they come over here and whatever exists in the way of parks and recreation, and that is getting minimal. And and so, you know, if you you know, we don't even have to help anymore. So, so it's, uh, I mean, to me, to me, I just think that we have depleted uh, Parks and Rec to the point where we have, we have bought a lot of Bavarian property, you know, the woods and things like that, but we, don't really, we haven't really bought anything substantial that, that residents can really use and say. Well, Don, part of that is because times have changed. Um, there, there wasn't uh, a great demand for the swimming pool at Beachwood, quite honestly. Um, there were other other interests, um, and we decided, uh, and, and one thing we haven't even mentioned is uh, we decided to support a youth center that now its funding is in jeopardy. Um, and I would hate to see us lose that. Um, nothing's going to stay the same. Uh, Clearly, and people's tastes and interests uh, change. So part of part of you know we, we've added a miracle field. We, we've um, but that doesn't smell us. Yeah, I know. But we but don't we maintain it. We don't. We, do we have that. permitted other things. We let little Caesars come in, mm. um, and I'm not sure where we are with them. But it sounds like they're not doing everything they said they do. They they are um, now a customer. But what, what do you really have? Yeah, we'll work, yeah, we'll do it better. Yeah, but what, what do you really have for the residents to sit today in Fox and Recreation? We have had, I mean, you look at Inglewood Park, and there's so many foreign buses in that parking lot, you know, because Kellogg Foundation and federal money was used. You can't prohibit anybody from using it, you know. And we turned down a million and a half dollars for Brother Rice building a, 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 a beautiful ball field over there, you know because people use it, but it's not South Field people using it. You know, we could have had soccer fields there, we could have had a lot of things free. You know, I mean, I, we, we make decisions, you know, that I don't think are really in the, the, the I, I hate to say it, in the best interest of what residents come here to use anymore. And, and you know, they go to the library and all the computers are used by all, everybody but truck fielders. 
you know, I mean, we can't keep them, we can't restrict them out of there. I mean, everything you go to, meeting rooms are full, computers are full. I go to Carver Lane, Lane and, it's, yeah. and it's loaded with people from farming. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, and so the same thing could be said about the nature center. But if you have peace structure, <coughs> right? Same so as we were talking about parking over by the library, I mean, looking for revenue. I mean, there's... I mean, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to argue because I know it's a tough call. But I, all I'm trying to say is we haven't built anything for our residents in the last 15, 20 years. And they're paying the bill. Okay, well, finished? Yes, I am. Okay. Okay, thank you. Jim, I do want to say thank you for this information. You have... Uh, put together every and answered every question that we had and as you hear this is a very very uh, tough uh, decision that we have to make and we have reviewed this up and down this is like the third or fourth time and a lot of the information that we discussed is not uh, you have not heard or mm -hmm. what have you so we everything that's been discussed here we've discussed we've pulled our hairs out trying to figure out how we could uh, continue with this with this project because the council has over over the years unanimously supported this this project. But what um, the finance committee decided was that we needed a full council to discuss this and make the decision because it will be affecting us for a long period of time. So what's before us now is do we answer this now or later and you brought up an in interesting point that caught my ear is that you wanted the full council to vote on this the only issue with that is that they need a decision by the 23rd and i don't know if a full council meeting or something like that is even possible before that day that would be something um, you would have to, to say but i do feel like Everybody should have will be able to weigh in on this. We we have worked the numbers back and forth. We have discussed parks and rec capital uh, campaigns, the capital issues that they have as far as what's needed, Beachwood, the the pool, how the, the locker rooms, the painting, parks and rec itself, the room carpeting. I mean, we have looked at everything and. Dave Brock, 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 yeah, Brock. Brock. He has said that this is something that he can do, that they can fit into parts and rest, that they can that they can afford to do this. Uh, Mary Carlock and the architects have guaranteed completion by the deadline. They didn't get rid of the department or make the demand or the change in when it was due. We have to have it completed within a year. They have to start on it now in order to do that. Jim has given us the most innovative way to do it without hurting the city. Um, it's really a tough, tough decision. I understand everything that's being said, and I, I, I agree with everything. I, I just think that do you want to lose the time, money, and commitment that we've made to this project? and not go forward. It's just really a, a really hard thing. But given all the information that's here, this is the, uh, the most innovative way that I've seen. Uh, Jim, I, I really have to commend you on that. We've worked, worked the numbers over and over. And we've had lengthy, lengthy, lengthy discussions on this. We've torn it apart and we've had everybody's input and um, whatever decision we make tonight I think just know that we've given it a lot of thought we really are uh, trying to do the best and we're trying to um, trying to keep this going trying to keep the, um, the grant going keep the project going and make the residents happy in, in the process without causing any real hardship on on, uh, on the city. And I think with these numbers and the way that this project is presented tonight, that's something we can do. 
Everyone here has had, that has wanted to speak, has had at least one opportunity to speak. There are residents here that have informed me that they would like to speak, and I'd like to give them an opportunity. Yes. There was one question that was asked that I think I could give a better answer to. Go ahead. I didn't get a full enough answer. Councilman Seiber asked, what would happen if they absolutely could afford to make the, this $190,000 exemption per year? And if we had to, I'm sure we could forgive the loan. Okay? Take the council action. So we could call it a transfer and just say that, you know, that in essence the LERP fund is eating both the cost. We don't like to do that. We've never done it. You know, every department's met, met their objectives on this. But again, this is not, this is not like if you borrowed the money for the bond issue. That's a disaster if you, if you don't meet those payments. So I think that's a more full answer to your question. Wouldn't be a good thing, but it's possible. All right. I'm going to, Mr. Lance, you're going to be the last speaker. I've got to get the public to one speaker. All right. I have a telephone. Go ahead. Sometimes when you step back, you're a better people. Easier future, which I believe now. The more I hear the talk that goes on here, they gave no solution. Step back. So we'll lose some money, but we'll have a better future. And I believe it. So I would, I would again say, let's put it on hold and see what happens. Maybe you might lose some money, you may not lose some money. There would be a loss of $1,122,000. There's no question about that. There's going to be more cost to it than a million and a half. You're going to lose more. You need, you need some clarification. It's going to be a, 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 a basic reserve for everybody in the Southeast Initiative. Okay. I want to clarify this number before, before we move forward. I don't want any confusion on any of these numbers. With regard to the grant funding, the grant funding is $500,000 state MDNR, $140,000 EPA. We know the state MDNR is likely to go away, probably the EPA too. I know the MDNR, but we got a notice on it. That's in here. So $500,000 MDR, $140,000 EPA, $150,000 donation from Denver. That adds up to $640,000, $790,000. What makes up the, the other amount to get you to $1,122,000 is the $332,000 that's already been committed to architectural fees, of which we spent about two-thirds of it. We spent $268,000 on architect fees. And that, again, that piece of it, you know, isn't, isn't lost because, you know, unless we were never doing a project, because the, you know, the plans are, you know, there. We spent $266,780.46 so far on architect fees for this project. We have $266,780.46. As I want to say, the architects ought to get paid first. The, the amount allocated totally for architect fees, and this is not just architect fees, it's site work, soil boring, engineering, permitting, there's a whole list of things. That goes with us and condone. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just laying out the numbers. Okay. So, that's what comprises the $1,122,000. So, that's, that's, that's what it is. I want to add, would you like to say something? I want to add something that we had talked about before but wasn't brought up here, and that is that the advantage of having this real loan spread out over a period of time is that it gives us an opportunity to do fundraising. And DENCO has 
promise to help leverage that money, and another corporation has expressed interest. So it would give us an opportunity for some corporate fundraising. That's what the LERP loan has, has enabled us to do. Um, Madam Mayor? I also want to say that um, this project started, I think, in 2006. It's a great idea. Uh, there's not a person I know that doesn't use or have been to Texas like it hasn't fallen in love with it. It's an amazing um, nature area for us in Southville. And we have two other that people don't use. This one is used and it has no plants. The, the, the decision before us is do we obligate our staff and our funds to build this facility and because of whatever has happened, we have to do it right now. And I just want to paint a scenario. Um, can someone tell me how many positions are we down in Parks and Rec? You have currently 22.75 full-time people in Parks and Rec. How many are we down? Uh, that they are down significantly from past numbers. They were as high. Actually, they're down probably if you take a long look, uh, come back to 0405, they're down about 50%. Okay. So, being down 50%, when we went for the millage and when we talked about the reducing revenue that's going to be coming into Parks and Rec have a dedicated millage. Um, we are facing an environment where we won't be able to do what we did. <coughs> we highlighted during our discussion some of the <coughs> real challenges that we have in Parks and Rec. If you visit any major city now that has invested in something, it has been in their Parks and Rec facility. They now have places for people to come work out, community centers. We do not have a community center place where people can come, have a cup of coffee. Our meeting rooms are extremely antiquated and not updated um, to the point that it's almost embarrassing, especially when I visit other facilities. I was just at Romulus. Um, they have a beautiful facility. I've been to Troy. I've been to... Um, other facilities, <laughs> and they're investing in their community, so <laughs> places where everyone can come. It's being used as a senior gathering spot or as a community gathering spot. And what we have sitting next door to us is an example of what a modern, uh, innovative city looks like. That's our library. We, we, we have our footprint. We, we know what it looks like. So you take our library and put it against this building, which even in this building, we're talking about alert. Um, I'm not that significant, but I literally freeze and burn every time the season changes. So we don't have a heating no system that works. Our, our um, handicap accessibility is not up to code. And that's really unacceptable, but it's not. We have a pool that Literally, they had a hose running because the filter stopped working so that they could jerry rig it to make it work during the summer. We have some major challenges with the, the one pool that we have left that's going to cost a significant amount of money. Our, our locker rooms are embarrassing. If, if, and there's a lot of people in this room don't use our parking rec, but I'm telling you, our citizens do. And our citizens deserve to have modern and, and efficiency in our parking rec and what we currently have. And, you know, I, I, I said one thing that I agreed with the former governor on, Jennifer Granholm, was fix it first. We need to take, if we're going to use LERP money, we need to invest in our existing property. You take that pavilion there that is a tr potential revenue maker 
and it's not Wi-Fi. It's so many other things that uh, we just recently bought chairs, so that if someone wants to use it, that they could have chairs. We could have chairs for them to use. You go over to the bird center. And, and if someone wants to cater out of that kitchen, the kitchen is not functioning. We ripped the kitchen out of the parks and rec facility over here because for some reason it didn't work. We don't have we don't even have microwaves or something where someone wants to have a meal there that it would make this property more attractive. There's the list, and I think I think for the council to make a decision without seeing a, an actual list of committed projects for parks and rec is unadvised mm -hmm. because you're making a decision on something to me that is a very emotional thing because it's great. It's, it's, it's like what you would like to have. And I would equate this to the person going asking for aid and he's driving a, 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 a Bentley. If you're driving a Bentley but yet still you want me to give you something, it questions, well, if you're going to build this really nice interpretive center, over in the woods versus fixing up our facilities that we have now that more people will use. And I'm all, I'm 100% for it. So ladies and gentlemen, why do you think the, the person who's going to build that wonderful complex over off the 10 mile school about it? It's because it was a great idea, it was planned, he looked at it or she looked at it, and it wasn't the time to do it. They still own the land. There's a, a housing development that was going up on Southfield Road. They stopped in the middle of the project. It was a great project. People were buying a house, but then the economy was out of money. So it comes a time when you have to evaluate where we are. We still have the issue of the safer plan on the table. We're talking about that. We're talking about all these things that we got to fix first. And, and the, the bad thing about where we are is that we have to do it now. We don't have a choice. And the $200 that we have invested in this is a design that we will have, and we, you know, I'm sure we're not the only city that, it, uh, that has been given a grant that can't utilize it this time. Do you know how many cities are not fixing roads because it's a match, and they can't match the grant? The federal dollars are saying we'll fix your raggedy road and they know they need it and the road is not being fixed because they can't match it. And it's not that it's not a need, <laughs> there, but it's the reality of where we are. We have been, it has been validated. We're going to have less money next year. Now, we keep saying one person who is a phenomenal part of Park Direct a very creative, innovative person. She has taken her ability and her skills and her passion. Carpenter Lake is a reflection of her work. But who's to say she's going to be here for how long? We've had a massive amount of retirement. She or her colleagues. So if your colleagues leave, we are restricted to keeping her in that over in the interpretive center. We don't have the flexibility. Because we're saying in order for this to work, part of the numbers is her salary being in that center. I'm not comfortable with tying up a decision for staffing based on that. I think that the emotion of saying, yes, we need this or we want that, I'm with you. But can we afford with all of the challenges that we have and I will, I will say this too. I ask the question, if we had the money and didn't fix it, then why? Mm. And I was told that we were told to be conservative, to protect our money, to make sure that we have money in the bank, because we have never as a city spent out all of our money, because that's not the fiscal thing to do. You make sure you always have a buffer and you have money in the bank. So the bottom line is I want Parks and Rec to be brought up to the standards that and Pam, you're gonna love this. It's also standard. Bring it up because we are we're we're falling behind tremendously. The landscaping on our pools. You know, we have beautiful landscaping everywhere. I wish our city officials would go to the pool and look at it. Go to go to the uh, beachwoods and look at the landscaping around our clubhouse. The clubhouse at Beachwood. Come on. 
When's the last time that building has been upgraded? Mm -hmm. And so we have these decisions to make. And if there's some kind of way, and you're saying that we have to do it now or else they'll let it go, are we restricted forever to ever go back and write for a grant? I'm asking the question. Oh, uh, probably Mary, the expert. But this particular grant is like the, it's one time money because it's right. No, there's mineral rights involved uh, where they got like a windfall. The state did get a windfall. Did you speak up, Fred? The state did get a windfall in natural resource money. That's what funds the grant. And we know this, the future grants, they're presently capped at 300000 So you will not get an opportunity to get a grant at 500000 They're capped at 300000 so that, that, that can be changed in you, you two or three back, years or five years. You can go other years. places. That's true. We're just saying that we, you know, this, it, what we're really saying in three words is decision time. Okay, because Exhibit C says get it to us by December 23rd. I don't know, we might be able to stretch that a bit, but I'm almost afraid to ask. Okay, um, uh, so so that's, you know, that would be gone, whether you could get other sources later, who knows. I don't know, we haven't explored naming rights at all. No. We, it, uh, I want to say that this plan takes, in, it the takes into account, <coughs> to be cautious, oh, I've taken, I've included zero revenues of any type, plus zero contributions from any other source, zero donation, zero revenues of any type. And, you know, so it, it, it's, it's uh, overly cautious, but I'd rather state it that way and then, you know, they say positive of that is great. But, uh, that's the way it's structured. Mr. Charette has given us the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. He's looked at everything to say under the worst case scenario, this is what we can do. I want to mention something about the grant. With the, with the MDNR, once you default on a grant, you let it go, it's, it's a black mark against you. It's very, very hard to get a grant in the future. They really do hold it against you. This is unlike anything else. This is one source to this. And this, this we know. Um, I mean, I do. I, the members of the public said they wanted to speak. I would like to hear from them. Um,
walking pathway. It's tastefully done. If you've never been there before, it's not a park filled with uh, straight lines. It's an adventure to walk through that park. It's, it's a beautiful city, and congratulations to all of you. Um, secondly, I'd like to say that I thought that the um, financial presentation by Mr. Charette was, was very effective, um, very complete. As far as my understanding goes, I'm a school administrator um, in Detroit. I work for Detroit Community Schools, the charter school there. We're involved in a lot of grant activity. Um, I do know that to refuse or default or whatever you want to call it on a grant uh, is really um, pretty hurtful to the reputation of the institution that's applying for that grant. Um, word gets around and the likelihood of achieving another grant is, I would say, pretty slim. Um, not impossible necessarily, but you really hurt yourself in that regard. My feeling is, and I want to say it's the feeling, that if this grant is refused and the, the Nature Center put off, that the likelihood of this uh, nature preserve ever happening um, is not very likely given our current economic conditions and where we see things going and so on. Uh, on the other hand, I think that there, there is a, uh, an investment, an enormous investment for the young people in Southfield. This is another way of looking at city <coughs> need. We need policemen, we need firemen, we all know that, and, and no one disagrees with that. But we also need something for our children, too. And school systems can no longer afford such kind of activities out of their school building. <coughs> and as a rule, at least I know that, and many school districts have had to cut back. And what a wonderful opportunity this is for the children of Southfield to uh, not be put off into the far future when they're moved on, but to um, have this opportunity to do this now. So, really in conclusion, uh, I do hope that you adapt this. Um, I'm very much in favor of it. I think it's a very serious consideration about the loss of this um, potential grant and this project yeah. ever happening. So thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Eddy. Um, <laughs> back and forth to that center for years. 
saying that my daughter is 25, you can imagine. We've been going back and forth. And I've always said, living in Southfield, I would love to have things right in my neighborhood. That's why I was so excited to see this center, uh, you know, come about. Now, um, I'm still excited because from what I'm hearing, there's money. And I think that that's great. Now, I know that there are other things and that there are other concerns, but I'd like to, for you to look at something down the line. When there's a dismal or lack of hope in a community, it's always good to have some symbolism of hope. Uh, the economy is not good now, but if you, part of that is, is confidence too. If you expect things to get worse, then so sometimes they will. And even in that, you have to prepare for that and still offer hope with that. I mean, we may not have the amount of money we had years ago to do certain things, but we still have joy and we still create things in our families that we enjoy. And I'd like to see that be a part of our neighborhood. Um, I talked to Mr. Simon, and he is the uh, program director at um, the Interpretive Center, and I just passed this one. This is the environment. I've got one of the copies. And um, I want to share some of the things he said to me. That center there, uh, the county didn't want it. Wayne County did not want that center to be built. As he said, as a matter of fact, Yolanda, they were going to build a road through that center. He said they were in opposition to it. He said, but since then, they have come on board. <coughs> He said, now they understand and they see, and it has been around for a while. So I invite you to look at that website. Although they are funded uh, part by the uh, school, they also have private donors. So um, he said, and he said, well, I wish that we could have uh, something like a friends group or things like that, which is something that we can do. So I'm looking <coughs> at the fact that, um, you know, some of the objectives that they have is to foster student community awareness, and some of the things that we said would do the same thing. Uh, what it would allow for is children and families to come together, which we still do that. Um, not just myself, but there are other homeschoolers and people that are not homeschoolers that use that facility as is. For my relatives, my family come in town, that's one of the first places we go. It's right in my backyard. I just wrote an article in our uh, OVCA about the uh, uh, Carpenter Lake itself because I thought, wow, this is great. And the last sentence I wrote was, stay tuned uh, for uh, upcoming news. So I didn't print the article because I said, okay, I'll find out what's going to happen tonight. There's also an opportunity for research to be done. Um, you know, laboratories, that's one of the things Mr. Simon also talked about. And one of the things, too, is it keeps and it brings people to your neighborhood. We just had new neighbors moving next door to us that have three little kids, and this is a great place for them to come. And he said also there's an urban suburban program, which we can also do the same thing. So I'm looking at that like this is really good. You know, I don't know all the, the ins and outs of things, but I think this is something we can do. And I hope that you all will take a better look at it, because if you look at now, first we have money that is available. We have $500,000. If it goes down to $300,000, there's 200000 we'll lose. But even if so, you can get more grants. But if we're on board already and the economy gets better, then that means that things will get better for us. Now, it may cost more later if when the economy is better to build. So it's better to build when we have this money here and we can do with what we have and expect for more later. That's, you know, that's my hope. I still have kids and I still have a family here that I would like to see things like this happen. And I'd like to not drive the Dearborn to go to the interpretive center. I mean, and also for other things. I mean, this, my thought is, wow, this is one thing I don't have to leave Southfield for. And trust me, we go, we go, we go in the night. My husband took my kids to the owl listing. 12 o'clock at night, I was in the interpretive center. I mean, we're driving in the snow to go out here. So families are doing these things. We will bring other people other than Southfield residents here to be a part of this. So there is hope in this. And I like the fact that there is some money, and I like the way he did the figures, which I could do that at home. But um, I think that it's great, and I would hope that you all would really consider it. Um, I know there are other things that you have to do, but please take time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have another request. Uh, Ms. English and then uh, Ms. Merrill. Uh, um, and before you, I think I'm just joining Ms. Merrill. Ms. Merrill, you I'm Stephanie English, and I have to concur that Mr. Charette, that was a stellar presentation. I had pulled the agenda prior to coming to the meeting, and it looked a little convoluted. The explanation is there, but so is the dilemma of choice. Um, I don't use Carpenter Lake, but I believe in the concept of uh, building the field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. 
I also believe that uh, based on our position uh, logistically and politically that we always should maintain and have the best standards. I agree with Mayor Lawrence um, that our parks and rec uh, facilities, because those are definitely used, they probably wouldn't have gotten worn out if they weren't used. I do believe that attention should be paid to that. But going even on a concept that I'm not familiar with, when you have residents or my neighbors that come and support and they do uh, visit this facility, and she explains the impact, the gentleman that I'm sitting next to that came up to the podium, I have to look at the validity of going forward and having a progressive thinking uh, organization, a progressive thinking city. I also agree with Mr. Lance in terms of being conservative, but also that gentleman associated with Detroit Community Schools, my question was answered. Is there a jeopardy of our reputation if we continue to drop grants? I have come to most of the council meetings. I know that we had some type of fallout for a grant from the road commission because we couldn't get in alignment with Lakeford Village. That money we did not uh, obtain and we weren't able to uh, capture. If we start to promote ourselves as a community where grants that come and are facilitated for us that we're not going to accept them, it's like a man that goes to court a woman. He's only going to come to the door and try to kiss her, take her out so many times, then he's done. So we need to look at it as a similar relationship in terms of our reputation. I'm not trying to be glib, but I was trying to find an example that's impactful that you see as this money is continued to be offered to us, that if we don't accept it, we get a reputation as a non-forward-thinking community. If Mr. Charette even has the fallout measure, because that's what I measure benefit from, what's in it for us, and then also to looking at both sides and is there a backup plan. He already said that perhaps they can write off any loan issues or whatever. He didn't say we should operate to failure. He's not saying let's plan on that. He's just giving us a thorough look-see into the future if this if something happens, which also satisfies Councilman Cyber's concerns, which are valid concerns. So it looks like the bases are covered, and if the bases are covered for the worst case scenario, then as Mr. Fricasi is saying to go forward, it is money that we may not get later on. And so even though I don't use the facility, I am entrenched in this community. I call myself a soldier for Southfield. I don't have children at home any longer, but when I look at the young man in the back at nine years old, and he is our future, and I talk to that educator back there, and this is something viable, not just for our own students, but now someone's brought up research. Who cares if other schools and other communities want to share our facilities? We are the center of it all, and this can make a big political statement. The redistricting has been done in terms of us being District 14. We have a lot of congressmen that are vying for this particular area. We've had Councilman Conyers, we had Hanson Clark, just in our council meeting audiences. Something big is probably getting ready to happen where Southfield becomes some type of showpiece or some type of magnet politically. So I believe that we need to look at this in terms of if it's a win-win, if the benefit outweigh the back end potential <coughs> problems that Mr. Cyber, you know, cautiously is bringing up. If you actually put those numbers up, and, and Mr. Um, Mr. Um, Charette is a numbers person, so if it's five in terms of a positive and three negative, if it still propel, propels us forward, then we need to have the appearance of a forward-thinking community. If you look at Ferndale, Royal Oak, I'm sure they had the same dilemmas on the table, but they went ahead, like this woman said, in terms of hope, they stayed progressive in their, in their thinking, still conservative, but they constantly moved forward to make our facilities cutting edge bring them current to some other progressive neighborhoods, and I think that that should be a determining factor. It is a hard decision, but I think Mr. Charette <coughs> has covered the loophole. And I do have a concern about our political reputation in terms of additional grant money being afforded and offered to our city. I have a very big concern about us continuing to lose those opportunities because I do feel that it does impact our reputation. Thank 
Mr. Counsel and Mayor, and when you opened the mic, I did want to say a few words based upon Mr. Seibert's comments that maybe we should hear from the new counsel that will be coming in. I think, first of all, we need to finish what we started. Looking at the notes, this project started over five years ago, and I think the funding is in place. It's been clear with Mr. Charette's figures that we need to move forward. I think it's important that we consider the future, not just think for the now, because the money is available. And if we lose or not move forward with this project, we're looking at losing $1.2 million that's been committed on the city part. I also think it's important that we must include revenue with this, which means I live in this area. This is exactly in my backyard. I don't think we should have people visiting the facility without getting revenue from them. But I also think it's important that we bring in the community, that we don't just try to fund it ourselves. And so we started tapping to the business community. And lastly, how can we think win-win? We always think win-lose. So I think we've got to bring a new mindset to think win-win. And I think we should move forward with this. I know the timeliness is an issue, but I don't think it should be delayed any further. But I think we should move forward. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Thank you for the opportunity, Council President Pro Tem. Now, I think for about a couple of months, I talked about the fact that we had this $2.2 million SAFER grant for the fire department to augment our staff. I think all of you have heard me say that if we don't accept that grant, that we're going to be blackballed. I think you also heard me say that we will probably need another grant for new equipment for our esteemed fire department, and we do. I'm a little offended that we are, and I think that Parks and Rec is a great thing. I have taken some of the classes there. I think the Interpretive Center is good. But what we're losing sight of is our community is only as strong as our public safety. There is a reason why the word unity is within the word community. And this just goes to show, and it proves to me, number one, I'm not crazy for the official record, and number two, that we don't have our priorities in order. Now, you guys are talking about missing the deadline, losing this grant, being blackballed, can't get any more money. What about that SAFER grant? Are you concerned about being blackballed there? All of these companies that have gotten these tax abatements that didn't need it, that was worth billions of dollars, where are your community businesses in this matter? How come these businesses are not giving back to this community that they support, the restaurants, hiring people? Why can't you go to the business community that you value more than the residents to get some of the money that you need to do some of these things? We are talking about $500,000, and we've got 39 firefighters that we need put back on the staff. Here's a call from a Fortune 500 company. Hey, we've got an important matter that we need uh, EMS and fire. Oh, well, I'm sorry. We didn't accept the $2.2 million SAFER grant, so we laid off 40 firefighters. Well, we're not going to be able to respond to your call in a timely fashion. I'm missing something here. I want somebody to tell me how we're concerned about that grant and not the first grant. I want somebody to tell me why this city used that grant that was already approved in February to market that millage. Now, people, residents, because I know you're going to hear this meeting on YouTube, do you see now we're going to need another millage? That that millage was to balance the budget to keep an emergency financial manager out of the city. I want to hear talk about that safer grant. 
Are we going to accept it? FEMA came up with $2.2 million and they're strapped for cash. Other municipalities would have been running down the street to get $2.2 million. And you guys are, we can't accept it. Now what I'm not clear on is there's all this criteria about the safer grant that we were afraid that we can't meet. What about the criteria on the $500,000 grant? <coughs> Can somebody sit here now that's sitting at this table or anywhere in this room tell me what's the difference in the criteria for 2.2 and the criteria for this grant? Now, what is the criteria for the $500,000 grant? Let's see. That you got to be open for a certain number of hours or you forfeit the money? You got to pay it back? A young lady got up here and said that we can just keep applying for grants and grants and grants. And that's true. But for every grant that you apply for, there's criteria. So are we afraid that we can't meet the criteria? We met the criteria, that's why they approved the grant. What's the difference? And Ms. Seymour, I'm elated that you gave me an opportunity to speak. So I'm going to acquiesce and see la and not use all of that one minute that you said I had left. But please, somebody, answer the question. What is the criteria on this $500,000 grant that you're not concerned about? And explain to the public the criteria on the $2.2 million grant for our fire department to augment the staff that you guys are so scared to accept. Because you're going to lay those firefighters off. That's why you don't want to accept the money. I noticed that Ms. Gerald didn't see a post office box this time. Oh, P.O. Box 155, yeah. Southfield, Michigan, 48037 0155. And I do live in an apartment. I give my P.O. box for security purposes. Thank you well, for your inquiry. Um, yes. I live at 2641 West, 10 Mile in Southfield, and trying to follow that is, is, is a little bit difficult because we're comparing apples and oranges. Mm. And I think that, you know, this is a drum that Ms. Gerald has been beating, and I, I guess I wish someone would specifically address some of her concerns. However, um, you know, my association surrounds Carpenter Lake. I, when I first got involved in the association, um, which is about, I believe it will be 21 years ago, we were working on trying to get Carpenter Lake as, you know, as part for the city. So while the interpreted center discussion has only been going on for a shorter time, we've been dealing with this for years, okay? Um, that park, every time I go by there, there are all kinds of people using the park. Um, I, I understand Ms. Jordan's comments about, um, you know, a revenue stream. <laughs> However, I think one of the other things to look at if this is built is that it would provide an opportunity for families to do something that isn't costly, which is also important to them right now. It's not like taking classes or doing other things. It's something they can all do together in a variety of age ranges. And I am concerned about the idea of letting this particular money go. Um, I, I don't think that it will ever be available again. And I, I frankly believe, I, I believe Mr. Eddy said that, that if it isn't done, built now, it's not going to be built. Because I think that now is a time when First of all, I, I got to assume that because not a lot of building is going on, that some of the construction costs may actually be slightly lower than we were anticipating <coughs> when we started all of this. So you've got that, you've got the grant money, you've got a variety of things that kind of are coming together right now. And I, I just sort of hate to see us give this away. And the fact that Ms. Jordan, who will, is on the upcoming council, uh, is in favor of it. I think answers some of the questions. We have another 
uh, upcoming council person here too. I don't know if he wishes to speak, but um, it, it, there's no question that we need police and fire. <coughs> but I, I did, you know, as Mr. Lance keeps keeps wanting to say, well, you know, we can we can change the rules on how we use the money. I don't think so. Um, I think that would be far more dangerous than anything else we might try to do when millages were passed with specific things in mind. <coughs> I also have to believe that part of what's going on, and I wish Ms. Gerald would stop mouthing and carrying on when I'm attempting to speak, okay? She does this all the time in the public hearings, so let's get, let you two get this piece of discussion, okay? She's been carrying on to the point where I can't hear what's going on up here because she is talking to herself back there. Anyway, I also have to believe that part of the problem in terms of what's gone on with police and fire and where we're going is the fact that we have interim chiefs. We don't have a true, you know, we don't have the actual leader in place that's going to be making decisions on personnel. So I, I have to believe that that's at least a piece of the factor in terms of what's been going on about personnel issues. Maybe I'm wrong, <coughs> but um, I do think that you know, this is a valuable asset to the community. And, um, you know, Ms. Ms. Haynes is, is sort of an example of somebody who's willing to come here and talk to you. But there are other families, you know, that would, would like to be able to use this. There are handicapped people who really can't use the park now because there's no access to bathrooms. Okay? And I think I heard that, as Mr. Charette always does, this has sort of been a worst case scenario in terms of funding. There is nothing to prevent further effort to secure additional outside money, to even partner with another community if need be to keep this thing running. So it just seems to me that, you know, those are things that could be explored as time goes <coughs> on and that we ought not to cut off our nose to spite our face. Can I just uh, comment very yeah, briefly? Yeah. Um, the personnel compliment, first of all, the acting chiefs of the police department are doing an excellent job. Uh, second of all, the major factor in the, in the rather rapid uh, reduction of staff in the police department is retirements caused by the actions of the legislature of the state of Michigan. Right, having, to, having to do with health care, health care issues. Mr. Thank you. And just so you know, the formal rules are to name and address for the record and Will you have Will do. My name is Jeremy Moss. I live at 29500 Franklin Road in the beautiful city of Southfield, Michigan. Uh, and I sat in on the finance committee meeting last Thursday, so I, I wrote down some of the questions that I was thinking of uh, about it when it was first uh, brought forward, and a lot of them have been asked at this table. Um, and now that uh, answers have been given, I do want to repeat my questions that I was thinking um, and where I stand kind of on the answers that I've heard. Number one was, can we reapply for this grant? And I haven't heard an indication that the answer is no. There is restructuring in Lansing with the Michigan Department of Natural Resources, but they've given a deadline as far as I've heard. Um, but uh, cities apply for grants on a consistent basis. If a grant opens up on any project that a city is looking at, um, every city kind of attacks it and wants the, wants the state funding or the federal funding. I don't think that they keep a tally uh, that Southfield uh, has, has declined this grant uh, that they've applied for. Um, so I think that they see it on a case-by-case -case basis. If the city of Southfield is going to use this money uh, to the best of its ability, they're going to give the, the grant. Um, and I don't know if they're going to look back and see uh, a past history uh, on one project uh, that they didn't think was financially solvent moving forward with it. The second question was, uh, is the money spent really lost and is the plan or the data that's been collected, is it still usable in the future? We talked about what we made a, what, $225,000 investment on this. Why would we move forward with $225,000 spent? Uh, it, you know, if we've made such a huge investment, we should go all the way. <coughs> but the, it seems to me if we revisit this issue, uh, many of the, much of the data that's collected with that $225,000 um, which is listed here, the, uh, the soil boring testing analysis, the architectural engineering services, that stays intact. Um, that can be revisited if we next month want to move forward and find
find another grant uh, that you can correct. apply for. 266, and that is correct. It, in 2012, that, that would yeah, be. The only correct. time it would be years, it's, it's, it's enough years past. So right, probably. right. So it's money invested now that will still help us regardless of what this table decides tonight. Number three were what other projects were being pushed uh, aside or put lower on the priority list from the Parks and Recreation uh, to fund this project. Um, I, 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 I subscribe to the notion of, of fix it first. Uh, we have problems right now in the Parks and Recreation uh, that uh, we can make further investments in our pool. I uh, know the locker room was discussed on Thursday, it was brought up tonight. Uh, and number four was you had mentioned, Mr. Charette, that uh, if, if there's a sinkhole or something, that would come out of the LERF fund. Uh, it seems like LERF should be uh, set aside or at least prioritized for emergency circumstances. That's one close to $1 million out of a $7.5 million fund that would be used to fund uh, the remaining uh, funds that we need for the, the reserve center. Uh, so I don't know, you know, obviously there has been no act of emergency going forward. That's why we're standing here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so I don't see this as the most urgent project. I support it. Uh, I think we all support it. Uh, but uh, it's not an either-or situation of either we support this center here tonight or we put asphalt over it tomorrow. It's either we build a center at the nature preserve or just preserve the nature as is until we can find the money to support it. So. I I know you guys have a tough decision, but it's not mine tonight. So uh, I'll join you next week. <laughs> Thank you. Following up on what uh, Ms. Jordan said, a win-win to me, a win-win tonight would be with all the passion that this community has, and everyone saying we want this and so for this thing. The reason why we're sitting here today is that some great ideas have been put out. Naming rights, corporate sponsorship, um, partnership. That sounds tremendous. Someone said that the Parkinson Hills people are using it all the time. Why don't we try to form a partnership for funding and operation with Parkinson Hills? But because of this timeline, we don't have the ability to do that. So to me, a win-win would be to reapply for the for the grant. If it's three hundred dollars, three hundred thousand, and we get the sponsorship and those things that we're saying, we still get our interpretive center and we get to utilize all these great ideas that's coming forth. Because I think it would be good. However, at this time and to say that we're going to tell parts and rent that everything else is, is sub priority, this is a priority because they're going to have to manage this project and they're going to have to have one of their staff people totally devoted to this, I think that's the win-win here. I think if we if we take take the moment, <coughs> because we, Denzel is not snatching their money back, we already have the architectural drawings, and it's an opportunity to have a win-win. And we can plan on a, because some great ideas have come up. And Don said he brought up the naming rights. Have we explored that? Have we explored? I think that's great because there's all kind of the state that they would partner with us and give us all kind of credit if we do some joint partnership. So if Farmington Hills is already there, let's let's capitalize on that and get some credit for that with Parks and Rec. And to me, that's the win-win. We can do that later. But the, the, the idea of this grant being lost, really, it is lost. It, it's not like FEMA grant. This is one source. And if you don't perform, it's very difficult. If we, if we deny this and turn it back, it's very difficult to get future grants. That department and their grants may even go away. That's one of the top Just for clarification. Um, there are a lot of things you can do once you get started. The dental grant will go away. It's not going to be there forever. So this this is this there is a, a time issue here. Who dealt with the dental grant? Who knows about it? Um, Ms. Caroline. Randy and I talked to them and it is a friend still here. Um that just for this project at this time frame and they would want their money back after a period of time. Mm -hmm. So they made that agreement with you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that was their conditions when they gave them, they approved our request. So 
was that solidified with anybody else? It was just uh, verbal? Or is it writing? Um, I think Irv was dealt with it when it actually came in. Uh, oh, he's still here. I, I can verify that that's true because I met with them over the over other issues regarding the knowledge and they they reinforced that. I was notified regarding the Denzo grant that they had certain uh, within a one week that basically was at the end of their calendar year or the end of their fiscal year that they had to donate this money right away and we had to set up a special account for them within uh, there was no written documentation that I'm aware of okay. uh, regarding this um, they just wanted to have a separate bank account interest bearing bank account set up for this money to be received and uh, that was and it was designated for uh, for, for the, for the uh, carpet relay project if it, if it moves forward now but they, they had a rush to get it done before the end of their fiscal year, yeah. and they was the that's, that's not, but uh, that's, that's not. No, but there, there was no written agreement that we had the money. We've received the money. We received yeah. the money. We <laughs> have it. We have it earmarked <laughs> in a separate bank account, and they 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 ins um, insisted on it being interest bearing and being separate, and not coming with the. When was the fiscal year? Uh, this was last year. Back, uh, yeah. I believe it was June. My yeah. So it has to be used by one. There was, there was no clear distinction to me at all. Well, we were told was set up a separate bank account. But they, they gave that this had to be um, used with, I think it was within one year, wasn't it, Mary? I mean, yeah, that's the inference that we well, were going to move forward at this time, and if we're not higher. moving it's forward, enough, that so we would give it back. Right. Eric, can I ask you a question? Sure. I have heard. Then so yeah. coming, mm -hmm. yeah. we're not getting things free here now. Mm -hmm. They're coming to us for a multi-million dollar <coughs> tax abatement. They know what they're doing. They gave you the hundred and fifty thousand. They're going to ask for fifteen million. I understand for twenty million. We have to speak to city administration or planning uh, regarding that. It hasn't come across to me yet for any concrete numbers yet. Nothing has been nothing. But, but I know that there are expansion plans. Uh, or uh, I would say from a technical perspective, I could defer to the attorney on this, but I think that um, that donation should have should come before council. I mean, we, don't, we just give the donations. Donation. Very good. Okay, just get it. <coughs> I, don't, I don't know. When, I, I, I guess I'd be a clarification on that. We didn't accept the donation without, without it being a council item. Or yeah. that, that's neither here nor there at this point. The money is there, it's in hand, and they had a they had a year in kind of obviously <coughs> they have some sort of tax contributing that they do. And this is money that they decide to send their way. Um, they also wanted to uh, move ahead with other helping us with other fundraising, uh, aside from the tax abatement. Um, they have a long history of working on the rouge and 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 that thing. So they, you know, they are good corporate citizens. Yeah, they are going to get a million, multi-million dollar tax. Right. That 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 subject's not hit the table. It yeah. will be. Yeah. But but the thing of it is, Denzel yeah. gives Denzel gives the two kinds gives the two things. Denzel gives the two things. They give for technical engineering, like LGU and other universities, and they give to environmental projects. And they've done this for many years. And this was. We did approach them first, kind of before the millage kind of came up and it just kind of ha all came to fruition right around the time of the millage, but we approached them just because of their history on the river. Oh, sure, I don't say anything about that. I just, I just wanted to, uh, I guess we got to make a decision tonight. <laughs> but so when you talk about their, the department is still intact, I know that you and who and the press went up and talked to them. And they said, for the extension. For the extension. And they said, <coughs> if we don't do it now. But again, 
to say that you can apply again for the 300 and get all these corporate things and do all these other things, right? I still say we should have a sense of what Parks and Rec is, is doing and planning and committed for these other things that need to be fixed. I'm looking for the win-win here. I would love to have this research system. But it's just so many unanswered questions. And to say we got to do it now, we got to do it but now. Well, we lose a lot of, can I ask you, can I have time that? We, we do lose a lot of money. You, to, do, to start the project, to say that we've got the grant we're setting forward, it's easier to get grants once you start it. It really is. And I don't mean grants, but I mean corporate donations. It's much easier to say. But to say that we lost the grant, no, we're not going to do What about the construction period? Because now we're going to go into the freezing of the ground. Tight. Yeah. But it that, can be done. As I said in, um, yeah, in my uh, uh, transmittal, uh, we have consulted with the architects. And uh, if you start right away with the bid, it can get done. There's delay. It, but it's tight. No matter how you so what if we don't make it because of the construction schedule? Are we not still with this? We're not going to bid. Well, my understanding is, uh, but and again, we need clarification on this. Uh, substantial completion. We'll get the grant. Is that what you're saying, Ms. Carla? That's what yeah, we want to get um, the grant. We want to get our scope items done. You know, we that, mean? that means the uh, the building, <coughs> the amphitheater, the walkways. You know, these things that we mm -hmm. committed to, um, and we want to make our. You know, we have a million dollar <coughs> of grant and match, and then we can have some additional expenses that will go on beyond that date of. Um, August 1st because we're over -manned. So, But we're still going to aim for that August 1st date. Worst case scenario, we have bad weather, some other thing goes wrong, and let's say we get more than half done. What will happen? I would be very uncomfortable with that. So we got to be pretty close to done. Yeah. That's right. Well, people, people have said that we can do it, so... Who said this? Who's the architect? We start tomorrow. It's an aggressive schedule. The building's been designed to <coughs> easily allow for construction during winter, um, and that's to our favor. Um, I, I have another question for Mr. Bell. Oh. It wasn't my intention to speak tonight, but I felt the need. My name is Roy Bell. I live at 28618 Spring Harbor in Southfield. Uh, I know I've spoken with most of the council and uh, other members uh, of the staff. And, and I know that some of you have been out there. Uh, I actually seen Brenda and her family um, one Sunday afternoon when I was walking out there. I go out there almost every weekend during the spring, summer, and fall months. And uh, as luck would have it or not, uh, the project, the Carpenter Center Nature Preserve was completed uh, at about the same time that I had some health problems and I started actually exercising for a living <laughs> instead of going to meetings all the time. <laughs> and, and I found that uh, not only did I learn to reappreciate my childhood and walking in the woods uh, as I did uh, a lot as a child of being uh, growing up and on a farm. But uh, Carpenter Lake is an absolutely amazing place to exercise if you need to exercise. It's also a great place to exercise if you don't need to exercise. But um, what I've noticed is the number of people there. I, uh, somebody told me the other day that they didn't think hardly anybody used it. If you drive by there, you won't necessarily see very many cars. 
I count the cars every time I go out there, which is usually on a Saturday or Sunday, but I count twice during the week, but uh, usually on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. And there aren't necessarily a lot of cars there. The parking lot's not full, but there's usually anywhere from 8 to 20 cars uh, in the parking lot. And some of them don't stay very long. You may go, you may drive by or go there, and there won't be but two or three cars. Five minutes later, there'll be 20 cars. People come and go there. It's not a meeting place. It's not like coming to a council meeting where you've got 50 people sitting here. Uh, people come in and leave, come in and leave. Uh, there's a lot of people that go out there during the summer months particularly uh, with their children to teach them how to fish. Uh, there's more line and bobbers and so forth in the trees than there are <laughs> anything else, I think. But, but that's the way kids learn how to fish. But they've all seen adults put up there. The only reason I mention this is to let you know that people do use it. And I talk to them. Most of them, almost all of them that I talk to are residents of South <laughs> Bend. I was talking to one about 10 days ago when I was there. I didn't go this past weekend because I had to rake leaves in, the, in my yard. And, and then Sunday it was a nice and windy, so it blew them all back in the yard. But, and it, which is another reason I didn't go to Carpenter Lake because I might have blown into, blown into the lake. But uh, the, the, the place is intensely used. Uh, by the, by the residents of Southfield. The gentleman that I was speaking to about 10 days ago uh, told me that this, that this Carpenter Lake was one of the best things that the city of Southfield has ever done, in his opinion. And he said, he said I was raised in the, in the mountains, mountainous area of uh, Ohio, and I've been up here for 20 years and been looking for something like this. And so uh, don't be misled by anybody that tells you the Carpenter Lake area is not used. Uh, it's kind of noteworthy to me that approximately a year and a half ago, March of 2010, this council unanimously supported moving forward with this idea of the uh, Nature Center. It's amazing to me that I've heard said repeatedly at this meeting tonight that things have changed. Well, they haven't changed in a year and a half. We knew exactly a year and a half. We knew uh, then what we know now. Everything that we thought would happen has happened. The economy hasn't got it better. It's gotten worse. And it's going to continue to get worse and uh, not getting any better for at least another five years. We knew that a year and a half ago. We know it now. It's still true. And for Southfield, it's not going to improve a lot. That was serious. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, and, and, to, and to say we're not going to do something that we were adamant about a year and a half ago is just appalling to me. It proves to me something that I observed by attending DDA meetings when it was actually called the DDA, the Downtown Development Authority in Southfield, 10 years ago, 15 years ago when he first started. And they would make a decision one month, the next month they would change that decision. They'd make, make a decision the next month, and they would change that decision. Is that what council is becoming? Um, I want to add some clarification, um, Grant, because I did go up to Lansing with Mr. Zorn, with Ms. Tarlock, and with Bill Zagman. And the reason I went was because I know the history of this project. It's not my project, but I know the history of it because at the time uh, we had a group called the Southfield Wetlands Woodlands Preservation Council, and I was the president, and I was involved in discussions with Judge Clarkson and Judy Weiser on the purchase of the property at the request of residents. So I had I knew the history of it, and my the reason that I wanted to have a group go was because they really didn't want to extend the grant. I mean, they said pretty much, you haven't been able to do it. We're going to withdraw it. And these were new people that didn't know it. The people that had done it before would have given us an extension because we have such a perfect record with this grant. And Mary Carlett can tell you that. But they completely changed over the people. These were all new people that came in. 
and they didn't care. They didn't know us. They really didn't. We spent, I'd say, probably 45 minutes to an hour talking about, I was talking about the history. I wanted them to know the story of our city, what we have done, what this whole process was. And in the end of, in the end of us all talking about what we knew, and I gave them a lot of background, so they really had a feeling of who we are. We've always kept our word. We've always, we've always performed every grant. They said, well, we'll take a look at it. We'll have to go. They had to go through two other <coughs> agencies. And it took weeks before we knew. But they honestly, talking to them like that, letting them know how much people wanted this and what our history had been, they gave us a break. We were, we were in a way surprised. We were in a way surprised that they said, okay, we got approval. There were three groups that had to be, had to, to weigh in on this. Their budget department, it was not a simple process. They didn't just say, well, you came up here, we'll give it to you. It was a very extended, involved process. We had to fight for this. And I'm just, I'm saying that to, that, that people that think that you can just go out and get another grant, not from this source. There aren't grants for this type of thing. It's very, very selective and very narrow. It's about land and water trust funds. It's for land or it's for buildings that relate to the land and water trust fund guidelines. So I, I just want to answer that. Sure, so sure. Go ahead, Mr. I was here at the end of Boxer and Julie Wise, you know, Wise left owned that piece of land and they also offered it to us for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We applied for a grant, got the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars city sent it back. Then, in the future, a little while after, it cost us a million dollars to buy back the land, to buy back. We, we made a deal with a developer and everything, but it cost a million bucks because they sent back the $250 then. That's the true story. So we're lucky um, we have I, it that, that for a million bucks. Right. Uh -huh. Yes, and let me... Uh, Try to uh, address the, uh, the things that have been raised by the mayor and and uh, and, uh, and and some of the uh, concerns that uh, we've talked about with the uh, facilities that we presently have. Um, I, I guess uh, we we share, have to share the blame with the parks and recreation for not pushing them to get those things fixed. I mean, it's not a matter of money, it's a matter of just doing it. Uh, there's always been money there, they have their own funding. And, and uh, you know, I always say, you know, you let things deteriorate, it costs you more, the more you let it deteriorate, and that's what happened. I mean, if you look at the meeting rooms upstairs, and I, I don't know, all of us had meetings up there, and we keep joking about the uh, one time there was condition blinds there, a call condition blind, you know, all broken and half done, and it looked like a piece of junk, and same way as Beachwoods. And I, and I told Waterhouse, they said, get those blinds and throw them away. I said, better not looking at a window than these dilapidated blinds that, you know, the kids do that. Well, they don't want to have those. You know, I mean, I mean it's easy, it's simple, you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I think that the blame lies partially on us that that we have not asked what Kim had asked for. Hey, give me your shopping list, what has to be done, and and tell us how you're going to budget for it. And, and Jim and I have talked to this, and if you come up with an amount of money, it was easy to bond for these repairs and get it done. I mean, you can start tomorrow. Uh, as far as the... Uh, is the uh, Weight putting put on the Parks and Recreation to watch over this building. You know, I understand from Jim, and I just confirmed it with Jim. The building authorities, like the library, are going to be responsible for the construction and the completion of this project. So, so I guess I guess I I just uh, think that you know, coming from you know grocery business, all kinds of businesses, I know that. The biggest thing is is, uh, is looking at the product we have to sell to both our business community and our residents. And I think that our product is really suffering because we have not done anything to change 
the way you looked at the city from a perspective of marketing. Uh, I mean, if you go into a grocery store, and I, and I, I, I kind of, I, I didn't mean to put it this way, but you know, I go to, to Jim's Kroger up here. I go to Jim's Kroger up here, and I laugh at him because I said, Jim, they don't do anything up there. I mean, it is the same old way. It's, 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 the produce department is dirty, and that's the way it's going to be, and and the asphalt's going to be unrepaired because that's the way they run their shopping center. And I said, I go up to 15 miles of the Lasha Road. And I said, I brought Jim to menu. I mean, I can even have lunch up there. I'm going to buy him lunch up there. I mean, they got a restaurant inside there. And you can go to a cafeteria. You can buy any kind of food, lobster, anything you want. And, and it's clean. It's neat. I've seen a guy with even a stick with a tennis ball on the end, and he's over there knocking out this, 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 the, the marks on the floor. Uh, you know, the, the bottle thing is so clean and neat. It's, it's a little building on the side. You don't have to step in, 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 in beer and pop and slush. I mean, you know, in, but, that, but that's the kind of impression people get when you, when you see things starting to deteriorate. And yes, those are usually facilities over there. Yeah, it's, it's an embarrassment. It, it is. And, but there's no reason for it. I mean, you can't say, you know, that, oh, he didn't have the money for it. It's just that nobody addressed it. I mean, you don't have the money to put drywall in the meeting rooms upstairs. <coughs> I mean, that's a simple way to, to make it look <coughs> uh, accommodating and fresh. Uh, painting and carpeting, I mean, these kinds of things ought to be scheduled on a routine basis. It's like our office buildings work. You know, you set a scale, and carpeting lasts so long, so you put money aside for carpeting. You need trim work done, you set aside for that. Roof needs so much, set as much for that. You know, and you have a schedule to follow. What we have done is we haven't done that. And so, yeah, you sit here today and, and looking at and blaming this request because we our failure on that, and it doesn't work with me. I mean, I think we have to continue to work on our product that we are selling to the public. And this, to me, would absolutely change a lot of residents' viewpoint of what we have for our families in the city. And you know, we got what 1,600 vacant homes here. You got to market those. I mean, what a, what a sales promotion thing you have that we have a place for families to go. You know, what a product it is for our schools to say, hey, you know, we can bust these kids over there, and and it can be. You know, see other things other than classroom walls. Um, there's a lot of things and advantages of this city, and, and you know, I'm not trying to sell it. I didn't mean to, but I'm getting more and more uh, feeling that we are going to really miss the boat in it. And, and you know, Jeremy spoke, and I believe what he said. He was at the meeting, and I'm glad he was there. But at the same time, it's not 300,000; it's a million too. A million too. I mean, all these other things that people have put up, if this thing goes, it's going to be at risk. And, and it shouldn't be, you know, that you jump at it because you're afraid of losing the money. You have to look at, are you missing an opportunity? And, and I think that we would miss a great opportunity if we fail for this. As far as the money that that is being spent for other needs in the city, parks and recreation, those are their funds. And, and you know, the Parks and Recreation Board, Mayor, they ought to be looking at those facilities like we do, you know, and like yours responding to it. And say, hey, you know, let's start getting busy. Just that, not a social group. If, if, you know, we just can't be paying off all the time. Let's go and look at what our needs are and figure out how we're going to pay for it and get things going. Uh, I, I just think that um, it's an excuse not to to go forward with this, and I'm 100% for it myself, and, and I have no concern at all that, that there's going to be funds uh, to pay for this. I think there's a lot of uh, challenges, uh, absolutely, uh, but I don't want us to to use the excuse, well, we're not going to give it to police and fire because, you know, we've got this money staying alert. Police and fire 
We don't have a need for trucks. I mean, anything they need, we have got grants for, we have provided. You know, uh, they're not hurting. Police department, we passed just recently, they fixed their shooting range. I mean, we, if this, somebody comes to the attention of this council to fix, we fix it. And they never said we don't have the money to do it. Thank God we don't have to say that. But we are a strong city. We are a strong city. We've always been a strong city. We've been a very progressive city. I think we've got to really continue to be that way. Right. Thank you, Matt. I want to add something that I said about Crystal Lansing because it wasn't just staff that wanted to go. We asked, Fred and I told the um, council to find out whether we wanted to preserve the grant before we went. I spoke to Lenny, I think Fred spoke to John, and I think to Ken. There were five people that said we want to save the grant, so go and try to save the grant. Who said we do have no, nobody asked me. I don't mean to clarify. Nobody no, asked me. No, all right. Well, anyway, we okay. still had we had a majority. We had a yeah. for it. But we had two concerns about operations. I think one was from Ken. Some concern about uh, the operation cost. But the, the majority council said those in town try to save the grant. So it wasn't, you know, it didn't come from staff, it didn't come from one person. That's why we made the trip. So anyway, I think it's time to. Um, perception. I think no one is disagreeing that this is not an absolutely beautiful project and that Carpenter Lake is not beautiful. It's just the timing of this project is it right, is it wrong. We just went out for a village election. And I asked those bodies, where are we going as a city? We have not sat down since the village to list any of our priorities. In fact, personally, I think our priorities are messed up at this point. Um, we keep hearing that we're going to have to get smaller. We don't have the money. We don't know where we're going to be in a few more years. We have to keep downsizing. We can't keep downsizing too much more. And um, things are not going to get better. The dollars are dwindling. We need money set aside for the emergency and the rainy day fund. We cannot continue um, doing business the way that we are. And it says this body hasn't even sat down since the election to say, where are the priorities? Where are we going as a city? And as someone who's lived here all my life, I'm very concerned for our future. I'm very, very concerned for our future. And I hope whatever way you go, that, you know, this project will succeed. You've heard our Parks and Recreation Director at the Finance Committee meeting say, our department has to get smaller. They're questioning whether they have to get out of the field zone. The golf courses are losing money. Um, you know, the buildings in our roads are crumbling. How many years have we talked about a zero depth pool? I want to say 10, maybe 12. We still haven't done anything. The children's area is falling apart, crumbling. We keep talking about the pavilion. Oh, we can make so much money, revenue. We don't even have a kitchen to support it. At one time we had a beautiful plan for parks and recreation and the, the kitchen area. I can't even remember what happened, but that went by the wayside. Um, I know the mayor mentioned the burr. We've got opportunities there, but there's no kitchen. So, I don't know. I'm just, con I'm really concerned where are we going as a city. Thank you. Well, I don't share your worry. I feel very confident in my city because I think we're going to we, we always rise to the occasion. I, we, I know, I think they all know that you're not in favor of this project. Um, it's not the project, though, it's the timing. It's well, the timing, the timing and the dollars. It's now or never. It really is now or never. If we don't do this now, it's never going to get done because it won't be possible. Um, let me just say yes, John, go ahead. Let me just say this to you. That, that, you know, you talked to me and you said the same thing as the finance committee. But, but let me just say this to you. That, that it isn't it isn't that the city hasn't got plans. I think that each 
each person that's heading up their department has certain ideas of what has to be done. I just feel very strong that what happened is, and I and I hate to use that, but the previous uh, <coughs> director of Parks and Rec, um, you know, felt very uncomfortable coming to council, uh, almost intimidated because council, I guess, would ask questions and couldn't get answers. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that every department uh, can adjust. I mean, that's why you have heads of departments. I mean, they're the ones who are supposed to, I mean, nobody goes to your department and says, you know, uh, whatever, you, let's set up a whole new election process. <laughs> your department head, you head up your own department, you get the elections going. Well, that's the same thing as any other department. Could it be planning or police department, fire department, you know? That's why you have department heads, that's why you have people in authority to, to run their departments. Uh, when budget time comes, I mean, Jim brought uh, three sheets to us. Said these are the three scenarios. Millage is very, very plain. Why we look for millage? Because forty million dollars, forty-one million dollars of our general fund go to public safety. And and the, the one scenario we showed was if we don't get some help from public safety, that we're going to have to cut half the departments up. That's what the pink sheet showed. So we went for the millage. We did not expect another 11% in home values to drop, or that maybe the appeals in the, in the, in the others, but, but at least we had a financial plan and knew what the outcome would be if each scenario didn't come about. And these have been corrected <coughs> as, as time went on. And as, as challenges come on, those figures are, are changed. But in no way do I really feel that this city, you know, and I saw Jim the other day, if you look at what the other cities are doing, you know, this building is obsolete. In other words, in other words, I went into to Sterling Heights, and they have one counter now, and your people would be with all the other clerical people. And all the clerical people be cross trained whether, whether that person went up to the counter for for whatever reason, anybody, if you look at the building right now, you've got engineering upstairs, planning upstairs, they got uh, you got a uh, building downstairs. I mean, that all should have been on one floor, one counter, uh, shared clerical, and, and and small offices for the department head. And that's all you really need. But but what we what we're running into when you say you're 200 people short is that because you have to have somebody stationed in all these wasted spaces that we have that don't that don't correlate with any other piece of, of ground you have. And, you know, I mean, uh, I don't remember the architect that said, you know, we should tear this building down and build another one because this building the is, is the not the meeting the demands. I mean, the heating and the fueling, whatever. And I'm not suggesting we tear it down, but I'm just trying to say to you that everybody is putting out, every employee is putting out and putting up with this building that is is not a building that you can get the most efficiency out of your employees. And, and, and so, but that is not to stop us from going forward because you, unless you tear the building down and make that the high priority, you know, you're not going to do that. I don't know when it's going to happen, but that eventually, I see that this building either is going to be used for something else and another building is going to be replacing it, and and it will be built to to satisfy the size of the city you're going to have. And, and and but you know, but that like I said, but we have a product that we have to sell and market, and this thing will help us market the city, and it will enhance the product we have. And, and I know what you're saying, and, and I'm well aware of it. Jim and I talk about this constantly. I mean, is it like nobody's listening and nobody's hearing or nobody, there's no input? It's just that you're dealing with a serious problem in that you've only got so many things and places you can put people, 
to get the efficiency factor. So, you know, so until that is really addressed, it will have situations like we have today. You know, we spent two and a half hours on this. I think we're ready to, to vote on it. Um, I'm going to go around the table. And Don, I'll start with you. We need a roll 10 and a roll 10. Oh, we need a roll 10. Time. All right. I need a I'll move a roll, roll 10. 10. A motion by Mr. Bertossi, supported by Mr. Taylor, to do a roll 10. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. And motion is carried. Uh, now we need to vote on whether to. Do you have a recommended resolution? Oh, yes, to sure adopt the. Madam adopt Chairman? Yes, Mr. Uh, the blue sheet that was passed out uh, with the recommended resolution, I uh, approve it uh, as it was submitted to us this evening. And Before that's the proposal that's on the table in this. Yes. So uh, your vote is yes? Oh, that was a motion. That's a motion. Yes, to to approve. Uh, approve. All right. Okay. And who supports it? All right. Most of them, Mr. Picasso, for the Taylor. To approve the recommendation, the resolution, is that correct? Is that correct? Yes. All right, all in favor? Aye. Do you have a roll call? Get a roll call. All right, let's do a roll call. Mr. Banks, let's do a roll call first. I'm just saying that we went through I, some I, of the things I, 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 I,
Um, I hope that, um, I, as I said, I, I support the project. I just don't think it's now or I, I need a little more time um, on this. But nonetheless, we're moving forward. I hope that the action tonight does not negate that we are going to go and look for additional grant money or corporate donations so that we don't have to take 978000 out of the LERP. Um, I agree. So yeah. I, I hope this isn't the end of it, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because we said, okay, we're going to go with this plan um, and we can turn our attention to something else and just ride on the LERP. No, that's not <coughs> that and, and Joan, that's my biggest concern, and I haven't gotten it satisfied. We're going into the winter season, and we know we've had project after project that has been delayed. And God help us, the building, the building the, uh, committee and whoever did the fire safety. Now, if we do not meet that timeline, what happens? Do we are we automatically obligated to the law? <coughs> That is my question. If we don't meet that timeline, that is mandated according to this, just like it said, you have to approve this by a certain date, it said you have to have it built by a certain date. Mm -hmm. It didn't say substantial. Mm -hmm. It didn't say substantial. That, that is my major concern. And I don't want it to be like we usually do. It's 24 hours and we got to make a decision tonight. We should know early enough if we're not going to make this building deadline. <coughs> because that is a major hit to our LERP plan. And if we're not going to get this grant, we need to know it. And, and it shouldn't be somebody sitting around hoping it's going to happen. If we're not going to get the grant? Because you don't get the grant until the building is oh, finished. Oh, no, we've been sure it can be done on this and then it can be done. John, we well, do too many well, things. Well, Insurance is only mean yeah. thing to me. Yeah. I want this. I want administration to be very clear. We should Hang get on. updates, and this should not be a 24-hour call special meeting. Guess what? We're not going to make it. We got to go into the alert plan. And I'm telling you, John, you're not building it. They said you will make sure. I, I, I have complete confidence. You're not building it. I, I, I'm just looking at you. I believe in fact. <laughs> I don't believe in trust. Yeah. Uh, do, our do our architects hear this? Yes, Okay. Uh, and if you can't do it, you better be real. You better be honest. Yeah, right. I don't want doors um, hung the last of days. We have one more item on the agenda. <coughs> and um, that is a discussion of offices. If you want to talk about a
I didn't realize. So we got six. Five, six, six, six. Well, it's the will of the council if you want to do it now. I mean, you point out under the yeah. charter that you are required to elect the council president at your next meeting. Right, which is the inauguration. Correct. And, and after, after that, that yeah. So you can, whatever you want to do between now and then, it's your discretion. Right. But that night, you must elect right. the council president. When's Miley coming back? Tomorrow? Good Could this body get together with a special meeting? This week? I could do it Wednesday. I can't do it tomorrow night.